Greetings from Maverick Stadium. It's a big one today. Utah State, their second home game of the season. They welcome in Weber State. And Kevin, we are ready to get this thing going. Weber State won the opening kickoff and is deferred. And Utah State will start this game off. Big thanks to everyone joining us, especially those listening and watching on the Mount West Network as well. As we are underway in Maverick Stadium, the kickoff will be taken three yards deep and a knee and Utah State will start at their own 25 yard line. Big game for both these teams rolling in here at Maverick Stadium. Weaver State with a 41 to five victory against Western Oregon in the game number one. Utah State with a game one victory over UConn but then struggled mightily in their 55 nothing loss to Alabama. And opening possession absolutely key for Utah State. I believe that this has got to be the, the defining moment of their season so far, this opening drive. And Logan Bonner, 23 of 38 for 320 yards, three touchdowns coming into this ballgame. Calvin Tyler to the right of Logan Bonner. Van Leeuwen in motion. They hand off to Tyler. Tyler gets past the 25. Tyler to the 30, to the 35, and wrestled down at the 44-yard line. A big gain of 20. Calvin Tyler on the inside draw, and the Aggies strike first early. Great sign to get the Aggie running game operating early and Chandler Dolphin has lost a helmet looks like he's okay just got the helmet knocked off he'll have to come yep. off so that means Puleyalo likely will have to come in and play center right off the bat in this first play and the Aggies a little upset I mean not with Chandler Dolphin but they want to keep going great blocking off that left hand side between Wade Meacham whose brother Hayden plays for the Wildcats and Alfred Edwards two receivers to the far one to the near Justin McGriff your receiver to the near side Aggies moving right to left Fake the handoff. Bonner wanting to throw, dumping it to the near side, and McGriff unable to come up with it, but a late flag, incomplete, in coverage for Weaver State. Camden Garrett, and let's see if they snag him with a PI. Tight, tight coverage, just a little sideline back shoulder fade route to Justin McGriff. I like the target to Justin McGriff early, but you're right, Garrett had him locked up, and Utah State will get the first down on that defensive pass interference penalty. Look, holding one of the two here. Here comes your call from the official. Pass interference, number seven, defense. So the Aggies now inside the Weaver State side of the field at the Wildcat 48-yard line. Aggies have yet to score a point in the first quarter. Had a goose egg in the first game against UConn. And, of course, did not score in the second quarter or in the first quarter against Alabama. Tyler remains in at running back, and Tyler gets the handoff. Tyler gets past the first wave and wrestles forward to the 44-yard line of Weber State. A gain of three on first down. And when you're trying to identify yourself as a football team, getting that running game early will be key. And Calvin Tyler already two carries for 23 yards. Second and seven for Utah State. Weber State shows blitz, brings five. Logan Bonner to the outside. And over the head of his intended receiver, had two guys in the pattern. And both of them kind of looked at each other, not sure who it was intended for. Justin McGriff, and I believe that was Cobbs, or excuse me, uh, Kyle, uh, yeah, Kyle Van Leeuwen and Cobbs over there on the far sideline. And the ball fell right at Brian Cobbs' feet, almost like he lost it in the sun. Here we go, third and seven for Utah State. Josh Sturzer, the tight end, split to the outside with Cobbs and Van Leeuwen. Justin McGriff, the wide receiver to the near side, and Calvin Tyler, your running back. Big third and seven here for Utah State. And they'll hand off, and Calvin Tyler, right into the teeth of that defense, only gains a yard to the 44-yard line. Again, that's an, a call that Utah State has done a lot this year on third and long, and they'll keep the offense out on the field. Here we go. Fourth and six for Utah State, and movement along the line. And that'll be five yards, and that most likely will bring the punting unit in. Here's the confidence First factor that you're goal. talking about. Number 61, offense. Five yard penalty remains. The freshman, Waylon Lapuahu, gets hit with the false start as he took that step back and realized it was a big play and wanted to really step up and make his presence felt, but jumped the gun a little early. So now, fourth and six becomes fourth and 11, and Utah State brings out Stephen Cottonley. Here comes the punt, high to the far side of the field. Fair catch signal, taken to the nine yard line. And that is where Weaver State will start their first offensive possession. But again, first quarter woes continue for Utah State. Really wanted to see points on that opening possession for Utah State. The false start penalty on Lapuahu sets it back. They have to kick it away. I do like the fact that they got the running game going early with Calvin Tyler and they took the deep shot. That was something that I wanted to see as well. 
I think Brian Cobbs may have lost the ball in the sun that wasn't able to track it down, but a good kick from Cotson Lee puts Weber State back behind the chains now, back in some, right at the 10 yard line. Bronson Barron, your quarterback for Weber State. Fakes the inside handoff, looking to dump it down, and it is hit, and balls on the turf. They'll call it incomplete. Looking for his tight end, Justin Malone, blown up before he was able to reel it in. Big hit by that Utah State defense. Just a little fake read to the left, roll to the right, slid the tight end Malone out into the flat, was wide open. The ball was right on his fingertips, but Michael and Yanwu blew him up for the incomplete pass. Josh Davis, the running back. Malone goes in motion to the far side as Bronson Barron hands off to Davis. Davis trying to pinch to the outside. He does. Gets to the 15-yard line, wrestled down at the 19. Nice nine-yard gain from the Alta High grad. It'll be third and one coming up for the Wildcats. We have a flag on the field. Late, late flag here. I believe that was Ethan Matagi. At the, uh, I'm sorry, no, 55. That's Jordan Latui. Locked up with Philip Paya. Not sure what the call is going to be here. Weber, Weber State, State saying it's against Utah, Utah State. Yeah, exactly. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Number 96. Defense. 15 yards. We added to him the run. Automatic. First down. So they call it on Kessie Bacauta. And these are the penalties. You know, you talked to, to Blake Anderson before the game. He said we got to be clean. And right now, a false start penalty on the offense and a a personal foul on the defense gives field position to, to Weber State. Nine yard gain plus the 15 now has Weber State at their own 34 yard line. Hand off to Davis and he's smothered under. A.J. Bonk, Pachong and others meets him at the line. Loss of about a half yard on the play as the Aggie defense stout on that play. One of the things you and I talked about during the course of the week was this linebacker play. I thought that between A.J. Bonk, Pachon and M.J. Tafisi, they needed to go for 20 tackles against this Weber State running game this afternoon. Good play that time by the middle linebacker, A.J. Bonk, Pachon. Three receivers all to the far side of the field. Davis next to Barron, the quarterback. Second and 11 coming up for the Wildcats after the one yard loss. Barron looking over to the far sideline, shifts his running back to his right. Barron gets the snap, steps up, waits, 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 and then is brought down near the line of scrimmage. They'll give him about a yard gain to the 35 yard line, but Barron trying to get past the line is able to fall forward, but the Aggie defense holds it to a minimal gain. Got a flag down, Scotty, late again. And the Aggie sideline, kind of with their arms in the air, erupts. Great coverage in the back end on man-to-man -man coverage. Barron could find nobody. But a penalty flag may give Weber State another opportunity. This is usually in the area of defensive holding. Let's see if it goes against Utah State. Holding, number 10, defense. 10 yard penalty, added to another run, automatic first down. So a third and one is not needed for Weber State because of a penalty. Now a third and what would have been nine is not needed for Weber State because of a 10 yard penalty and the Wildcats get a fresh set of downs at their own 45 yard line. Three penalties already against Utah State. Two on this defensive series. Two receivers on each side, including Hayden Meacham, the tight end, the brother of the Aggie offensive lineman. Barron trying to throw the slant. He's got a man, 10 yards to the Aggie 45-yard line. Nice pitch and catch, and Hayes Hadley has his first reception for the Wildcats today on the slant. 10 yards for the Wildcats, the Aggie side of the field. Simple zone read held the linebackers, a slant route to Hadley, and Wildcats on the march. Meacham shifts to the far side of the field. Three receivers to the far. Davis still in at running back. Four-man front for Utah State. Wildcats moving left to right. Barron wants to throw the slant wide open. Hit and breaking out of a tackle to the 30-yard line, down to the 31-yard line. A 14-yard gain by Weber State. And that's Jacob Sharp reeling it in. Two catches for 43 yards a week ago. Again, just a slant route, simple slant route. Got inside of Anyanwu. Gervin Hall missed the tackle. Weber State with pace, handoff. And Davis able to get past the 30 to the 27 yard line, a gain of four on first down by Josh Davis, the Alta High grad who had a great freshman and sophomore year, played with injuries the last two years, but he's running hard today. Weaver State sideline juiced up right now with this drive. Three to the near, one to the far. Davis at running back. Barron with his five man front, holds up play, looks to the far sideline. Included in that five man front is Patrick Joyner Jr., who went out with a targeting penalty last week but it's back in the game this afternoon. 
Bronson Barron fakes the handoff, wanting to throw, looking middle of the field, intercepted by Glenn Wanyu as Barron led him too far, and Wanyu reels in the interception, and the Aggies have the ball at their own eight-yard line. What a pick by the Utah State D. You talked about it in the pregame, that sometimes Bronson Barron will, will serve one up. Well, this was a simple in-cut again. I believe that was Jacob Sharp out there, the wide receiver. And Barron led him too far to the inside, and Anyangwa was right there for the INT. There you go. Aggies get the first turnover of the game. No score in this one. You're listening to Aggie football from Learfield. So our With unrivaled landscapes that provide a quality of life unlike any in the country, you'll find us immersed at the peak of nature's splendor through a gateway of opportunity which leads to academic and personal growth that is beyond compare. Our students learn at the peak of achievement. And as our more than 5,000 student athletes take the field of play with unequaled passion, you'll find us performing at the peak of competition. The Mountain West is at the peak. Credit Union featuring the academic success of USU student athletes on their social media channels. This week, the America First Credit Union student athlete, academic athlete of the week, De'Ara Walton from the soccer team. But Kevin, big interception there by Utah State. Yeah, Weber State had gotten eight plays, aided by three Utah State penalties that resulted in three Weber State first downs, and then a couple of quick slant routes for Bronson Barron to Jacob Sharp and to Hayes Hadley, this time going to Sharp again. And Michael Anyangwu right there for the interception as Bronson Barron led him a little bit too far to the inside. Fourth interception by the Utah State defense this year. First interception for Bronson Barron this season. Tyler stays in a running back. Two receivers on each side. Aggies at their own eight-yard line after the Anyangwu interception. As Calvin Tyler next to Bonner. Bonner claps his hands. Hands off to Tyler. Tyler trying to get to the outside, gets past the 10, and pushes to the 14-yard line. A nice gain of six yards on first down by a patient running Calvin Tyler. At 161 yards in the opener against Connecticut. Tough sledding against Alabama, but great to see that young man get on track here in the first quarter. Same formation for Utah State. Tyler at running back. Two receivers on each side. Four-man front for the Wildcats. Bonner looks to the near sideline. And then holds up play for a moment. Bonner gives to Tyler. Tyler has met in the backfield. He'll lose two. Back to the 12-yard line. Weaver State not fooled on that one, and the Aggies go backwards as Utah State now will have a third and seven coming up, and the Aggies very committed to the run here early on in this game. Part of that is to protect Logan Bonner, but part of that is also the six man in the box, man free in the back end. But right now, you got to think that Anthony Tucker's got to dial up something in the pass game. Get something targeted to the inside, either to Nana Davis or maybe on the near side to Justin McGriff. Logan Bonner with Tyler to his right. Here gets the snap, fakes the handoff, throwing to the outside. It is caught by Cobbs, but he'll be three yards shy of the first down at the 16-yard line, about two yards shy. Aggies need to get to the 18 for the first down, and Blake Anderson waves to his offense, says, get off the field, Cotton Lee's coming in. Part of that is they've got to be better on second down. They had the good first down carry from Calvin Tyler, but then they go backwards. They've got to be more efficient on that second down play where they seem to run it quite a bit on second and long situations. Weber State is incredible to say the least on third down defensively. Only gave up two of 14 on third down last week. As the punt taken at the 43 yard line, fair catch and Weber State will have great field position to start this drive. The other thing about Weber State, even though they were six and five last year, you look at their numbers, it doesn't look like a five or a six and five team. They were they only allowed 27% conversions on third down, and already the Aggies struggling on third down today against this Weaver State defense. And I think that on the opening position, they had something dialed up on fourth down. They had the false start penalty, had to give it up. But you're right, Weaver State, there's a reason they're ranked 16th in the FCS. They've been to the playoffs five of the last six years. Jay Hill knows what he's doing over there on defense for sure. Weaver State offense back out on the field. 
Malone in motion, lines up in the backfield. Straight away handoff, trying to get blockers. He's got it to the outside, past the 40 to the 35-yard line of Utah State, down to the 33-yard line, and that's Damon Bankston, 5'11", 195-pound sophomore that they love, that combination with him and Josh Davis. Yeah, Bankston's the speedster, and you can see that. He broke the line of contain, got to the sideline, and a big gainer on first down. Gain of 25 on first down for Bankston, and Weber State, no score in this game, but Weber State has dominated here early outside of the interception. Hand off to Bankston this time, nowhere to go. Met at the line, dropped at the line, gained of maybe a half yard to the 32. That's Sandy Tuyaki, Tavian Coleman up front, alongside Patrick Joyner, Jr., Byron Hobbs, MJ Tafisi, AJ Bonfachon, and now Mukesi Pacalta comes back in for Coleman, trying to bottle up that inside run game for Weber State. 8.29 left here in the first quarter, no score. Weber State with their second offensive possession. Malone shifts to the left side, pistol formation for Barron, fakes the handoff, rolls right, has some late pressure, needs to get rid of it, finally dumps it down, and Malone's able to bring it in, but not in bounds. They're gonna rule it out of bounds. It'll be third and 10 coming up here for Weber State. Really good play this time by Kaleo Nevis, I believe it was on the tight end. Had the, again, the play action, fake to the left, Sprint out to the right, had the tight end dragging out into the flat. Toledo Nivas was right there with him. And now big third and long for this Aggie defense. Let's see if Ephraim Blonda comes with a prowler defense. Two receivers to the near, one to the far. Bankston remains in at running back. Pistol formation. Handoff to Bankston. He's trying to bounce the outside. He's got a first down to the 19-yard line. Aggie's not ready for the run. A 13-yard run. Make it 14 to the Aggie 18-yard line. They did have the prowler and a good call from Mickey Mental, the offensive coordinator from Weber State. The off-tackle gash as they just got outflanked out to their left-hand side. Weber State converts the third and long on the handoff to Bankston, who's got two big carries in this game. And here comes Weber State into the Aggie 20-yard line, into the Aggie red zone. Bankston to the left of Bronson Barrett. Straight drop back. Looking right side, nearly intercepted. Wide receiver fell down, intended for Jacob Sharp. And a late flag comes in. They're going to say Sharp got pushed down by Anwanyu. I don't know about this one. They're talking about it. It just looked like Sharp slipped and fell. Uh, A.J. Carter was right there with him. Philip Pea, by the way, down at the back at the 28-yard line. They're going to work on him. They may pick this one up, Scotty. I'm not sure. That, that just looked like Sharp had fallen down on the, the hook route in front of A.J. Carter. The flag came out very late. Carter was not even there. He was going for the football. No official word yet. Pass interference, number 23, defense. Bobby we'll place a squad of foul. All right, first down. So they're going to mark it at the 10-yard line. It will be a pass interference against Utah State. And here comes Weber State with a fresh set of downs. It'll be first and goal at the Aggie 10-yard line. So they call it against Kaleo Nevis, not against A.J. Carter. Must have been more on the inside. We didn't see it. Blake Anderson not happy with this side judge who's thrown two late flags one on aj vonk and this one on kaleo neves who was covering the tight end and so blake anderson wants an explanation yep blake anderson still talking to the officials it'll be first and goal at the 10-yard line weber state they don't want to hear anything about this fbs fcs stuff they're here to play today for sure playing physical in the run game yep banks in a couple of big carries on this drive now three carries for 39 yards. Two receivers to the far side of the field. Bankston remains in a running back. Malone shifts to the right side. Really good tight end for Weber State. Bobbled snap, handoff to Bankston, and Utah State will have none of it. Two-yard loss back to the 12-yard line. A little bit of confusion in that backfield between Barron and Bankston in the center, and it leads to a Utah State TFL. Yeah, Ethan Otagi in the center snapped it early. Nobody was ready, and Barron was very alert to collect the snap. But Utah State right there for the TFL, their second TFL here of the quarter. Second and goal at the 12-yard line. Bankston in the pistol formation, two receivers to the near side. Keep an eye on Ty McPherson, number one, lone peak guy. 
And Weber State wants a timeout. Didn't have the right personnel. Clock was running down. Jay Hill timeout. takes the timeout. Weber State. Timeout on the, the field. We'll take it as well. Half. Utah State and Weber State. Timeout no score field. midway through the first quarter. But Weber State at the Aggie 12 when we come back. This is Utah State football from Learfield. Spins out of pressure. End zone. No score between Utah State and Weber State. Wildcats at the Aggie 12-yard line. Hey, for big-time banking with a hometown feel, Zions Bank is for you. Talk to a banker today at your local branch or visit Zion Bank, ZionsBank.com, a division of Zions Bank Corporation, N.A. member FDIC. All right, second and goal at the 12-yard line for Weber State up against this Aggie defense. Aggies have already forced one turnover. Now you're just hoping to get off the field and hold to a field goal. Yeah, really early going, dominated by Weber State. We wondered about the hangover effect for Utah State. Well, four penalties for 38 yards. Three of those penalties on this Aggie defense. But now inside the red zone, can the Aggie defense step up and force that kick? Bankston remains in a running back, still with the pistol formation. McPherson and Sharp are your receivers to the near side of the field. Bronson Barron, your quarterback. Looking right, throwing right to the corner and over the head of everybody. Looking for McPherson on that corner route and just overthrew it. Look again like a little bit of confusion. In fact, you saw Bronson Barron fake right when the running back went left. Yeah, confusion in the backfield and then just a single inside fade route from Ty McPherson against Gervin Hall. Great coverage from Gervin Hall. Third and goal from the 12. Utah State after seeing Weaver State start this ball their own 40 yard line. Making it all the way down here for a third and goal opportunity inside the Aggie 20. See if the Aggies can get a stop, force the field goal. Pistol formation once again. Bronson Barron gets the snap, hands off to Bankston, and the Aggies not fooled at all. Ripped down at the 15 yard line. Aggie defense and MJ Tafisi coming up with the TFL. They got Utah State earlier in the drive on a third and long with Bankston. And this time, MJ Tafisi was posted up, had man-to-man -man responsibility with Bankston, and met him in the backfield for the TFL. So here comes the field goal unit out on the field. Kyle Thompson, two of three last week from, uh, from field goals. This one will be about a 32-yard attempt. Excellent field goal kicker for the Wildcats. Hold down, kick is up. Certainly looks good, and it is, and Weber State has their first points of the game as they lead Utah State 3-0 with 6.09 left here in the first frame. So early going, Weber State really having the better of it, but a good job by that Aggie defense to step up and, and force the kick. The Weber State scoring drive won eight plays, 42 yards in three minutes and seven seconds. And this pigskin scoring summary is brought to you by your Utah Port producers. For more information, visit port.org. 6.09 left to go here in the first quarter. 3 nothing is our score. As Weber State will kick this thing away. Utah State's moved the ball a little bit, but just, again, miscues. Just can't seem to finish drives. Yeah, four penalties as well. But a good job responding when they got inside the red zone. The defense was able to get two TFLs, and then the great coverage from Gervin Hall on Ty McPherson on the fade route. Here comes the kickoff. This one does look returnable, and uh, it, it will be. First return by Vaughn on the season. Gets hit at the 15, tries to bounce to the outside. Here we go, 30, 40, 45, 50. One man to beat, 35, 30. He'll take it the distance. 10, 5, get in the end zone. Touchdown, 
Utah State. How about that? Terrell Vaughn, his first return of the season, takes it all the way in for a score. Wow. We heard about Savon Scarborough for so many years, and who is going to replace him? Well, it's the transfer from Ventura College, Terrell Vaughn, who almost got caught about the five-yard line as he backstepped into the end zone. But wow, what a electrifying play as Blake Anderson ran with him right down the sideline into the end zone. So the legend of Savon Scarver doesn't end with Savon Scarver. Terrell Vaughn takes it back. We'll see what the official number is. 100 yards. Hold down on the extra point is up, and it is good. And the first points this year scored in the first quarter come from a 100-yard kickoff return. He actually took it a couple yards deep, and I think officially they have to count it as a 100-yard return. Great job by that Aggie special Time teams unit. And this Aggie pigskin scoring summary is brought to you by your Utah pork producers as they proudly support Aggie families by producing healthy, nutritious pork for your dinner table. Real pork raised by real Utah farmers. For more information, visit pork.org. 7-3 is our score. 5.53 left in the first. Utah State with their first touchdown of the game on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield. You can have live college sports in your hand this year with the brand new Varsity Network app. Hear live, play by play, and keep up with your favorite teams and audio broadcasts no matter where you are with this free new app. Be sure to download the Varsity Network app today. This March, you can listen to exclusive Westwood One coverage of the NCAA men's and women's basketball tournaments for free on the Varsity app. Powered by Learfield. Listen to every game at a truly unique listening experience. It's all free. Search NCAA Championships. Terrell Vaughn, a 100-yard kickoff return, and the Aggies have their first points, leading Weber State 7-3. Valley Office Systems is a proud partner of Utah State Athletics for nine years. Support the Aggies and your local team at Valley Office Systems with all your copy, print, scan, and furniture needs. Well, how about that? His first return, everything's been a uh, touchback or a kneel in the end zone, but Terrell Vaughn, his first official kickoff return, goes for a score. Great blocking right about the 20-yard line, made one man miss. And then he got to the Aggie sideline and outran the kicker until the very end. Ty Thompson, the kicker, almost caught him before he down danced or backed his way into the end zone, as it is the Aggies use special teams to get on the board to start this game. And here comes Elliot Nimrod kicking this one away. It'll be taken at the three-yard line by Weber State. Wildcats with a nice return and then knocked down at the 21-yard line. Beautiful open field hit, and Weaver State will start at their own 21. Max Alford down on special teams. This young man out of Park City High School is going to be a great Aggie linebacker when his time is called. But what an electrifying way to get this Aggie crowd jacked up. Terrell Vaughn takes it 100 yards to the house. So the Aggie defense back out on the field. Time of possession after that is going to be heavily leaning towards Weaver State. By the way, Jay Hill is a special teams master. That is something that's not going to sit well. That does not happen very often to, we, to uh, Jay Hill coach teams. Tight formation, pistol formation. Josh Davis back into running back. Fake the handoff. Looking to the far side of the field. One-on-one -on -one coverage and a cut at the 35-30. Down to the 18-yard line. There's Ty McPherson for Weber State. All the way down to the Aggie 17-yard line on the go route. What a beautiful rainbow from Bronson Barron. Ty McPherson at a lone peak just beat Andre Grayson down the sideline and a beautiful throw from Barron right in his lap down the Weber State sideline. Ty McPherson last year, 37 catches, 478. Only had one catch for 14 yards against Western Oregon last week, but this guy is an absolute menace at wide receiver, and he flexed on Utah State there. Just separated from Andre Grayson, 61 yards. Josh Davis is right now, Weber State right back in the red zone. Josh Davis gets a handoff, he's got a hole, he'll walk into the end zone. Five, four, three, two, one, touchdown Weber State, and the Wildcats just need two plays to take the lead right back against Utah State. Wow. 
so much for the momentum. Great pitch and catch, Bronson Barron to Ty McPherson, and then Josh Davis waltzes in from 17 yards out for the score. So Josh Davis, who again suffered a lot of injuries and a lot of issues over the last two seasons, but this guy, his first, uh, the 2018 and 2019 seasons, ran for over 2,500 yards and, and 20 touchdowns. Here comes the extra point for the Wildcats. Hold down, kick is up, and it is good. And Weaver State takes the lead right back. 10 to 7 with 504 left to go in the first quarter. As back and forth we go, Kevin. After a two-play 79-yard drive, took only 44 seconds. And this scoring summary is brought to you by your Utah Pork Producers. For more information, visit pork.org. And the Aggie sideline, who was elated just a moment ago with the Terrell Vaughn kickoff return, now has got to regroup, finding themselves three points down. Yeah, two plays, 79 yards. Weaver State's not going to be intimidated. Now look, they, they went to Salt Lake City and played the Utes extremely tough last year to open up the season. And again, they'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. That's the hallmark of a Jay Hill team. They'll, they'll fight with anybody. They've been in the playoffs five out of the last six years in the FCS, including a semifinal run, I believe it was 2018, that uh, they got there. Jay Hill knows how to, to win, build a winning program, has won the Big Sky Conference four out of the last five years. So Bronson Barron's already got an interception and he's already got a touchdown. That's what this kid's all about. He is a gunslinger and he's got a short-term memory too. And he's three of seven for 86 yards, including that 61-yarder to Ty McPherson. And Josh Davis and, and Damon Bankston right now, between them, nine carries for 64 yards, and it's really the running game that has hurt Utah State defensively in the first two games. Kickoff goes out of bounds out of the back of the end zone, but yet we still have a flag thrown at the six-yard line. Let's see what this is. Interesting call on a, on a non-return kickoff. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 16, on the receiving team. Oh, geez. Pass the distance to the goal. First down, Utah State. So that means the Aggies will start at their own 13-yard line. I did not see what happened there. It looks like a late push. I believe that was on Jamie Nance. They called yep. it five penalties now for Utah State. You wondered about the discipline. You wondered about the leadership. Kind of evidenced right now after 11 penalties against Alabama a week ago, five already here in the first quarter for 53 yards. Calvin Tyler, the running back. Logan Bonner has only attempted two passes so far. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near. Five man front for the Wildcats. Motion man comes to the near side. That's Brian Cobbs. Bonner waits for him to get settled, claps his hands, fakes the inside handoff. Throws middle of the field. McGriff with a beautiful catch at the 25-yard line. Extended those hands, reels it in, and a gain to the 26. Beautiful 13-yard catch by McGriff. Just man-to-man -man defense. McGriff made a great, solid catch in front of Camden Garrett. Back to a five-man front. Nana Davis is your motion man. Hand off to Tyler. Tyler is tackled from behind. Forward progress to about the 28-yard line. And again, getting a little chippy here on the outside between Utah State and Weaver State. The seam Col Colvin, the strong safety, was able to run him from behind. Calvin Tyler had a seam there, but Colvin was able to close it out for just a short game. Second and eight coming up for Utah State, with Weaver State leading this game 10-7, 422 left here in the first quarter. Davis coming out of the backfield in motion. Fake the handoff, Bonner looking to the far side, caught by Davis, oh, dropped by Davis. Would have been good enough for a first down, but Davis unable to bring it in at the 36 yard line, drops it, and it'll be a third and long coming up for this Aggie offense. And I'm not so sure you want to be giving that ball back to Weber State right now with the Wildcats and what they're doing offensively. They're hot right now for sure. Nana Davis wide open on the Aggie sideline, just couldn't reel it in. Good throw from Logan Bonner. A good protection so far for this Aggie offensive line. Yep. That will allow Anthony Tucker to maybe take a few more shots. Third and eight coming up. Utah State not afraid to run it on third and long. Calvin Tyler's your running back. Bonner will sprint to the outside, looking right, throwing right, and intercepted off the hands of Cobbs. This could go back to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, and wrestled down at about the eight yard line. Goes off the hands of the intended receiver Cobbs into the defensive back hands, and Weber State will have the ball with the lead and at the Aggie six yard line. A little bit of a high throw is a, a half sprint from Logan Bonner to the right. 
high throw above and yep. off the hands of Nana Davis and right into the hands of Jalen Rock, the cornerback, who brings it back yep. inside the 10. By the way, good catch. That's Davis, not Cobbs. Number six, not number eight. You have the ball, and you're right, a little high, and Davis knocked it up, and here comes Weber State at the Aggie eight-yard line, already leading this game 10 to seven with 3.59 left in the first quarter. That's Logan Bonner's first interception of the season. Just a little bit of a high throw on the sprint. Handoff, looking to the outside. Gresham and others there to rip down Bankston. Actually, that's Deontay McMillan, or Dante McMillan, the running back, number 28, from Seattle, Washington, with the carry. Gain of about one yard to the seven yard line. Good job by Daniel Gresham getting off the block and making that tackle. Three receivers to the far side. Bronson Barron waiting for the snap, then stops, looks over to the far sideline. Weaver State running a little bit more pace than Utah State has in this game. And then they'll look over the sideline once they get the alignment, get the call out of the pistol. McMillan in pistol formation behind Barron. Hand off to McMillan and gets past the five, stretches to the three yard line. It'll be third and goal from the three. And another Aggie down on the field. Pyatt was down a little earlier. Can't tell if that might be him again. Number, number starts with a nine. I'll give you that much. Just a little off tackle play to McMillan. A lot of variety with these running backs from Weber State. The speedster Bankston, the more north and south guy with Josh Davis, and a little bit more power here for McMillan. Still down on the turf at about the six yard line as the defensive player for Utah State finally gets some assistance. Vakauta, perhaps. Yep. Who's been banged up all fall long. Pekesi Vakauta. Six foot, 285 pound sophomore out of Fontana, California. Now the Aggie defense again in a position where they're, they want to try to force the kick. Keep this a one score game. Weber State leading Utah State 10-7, 309. After a Logan Bonner interception returned to the eight yard line. Weber State now has a third and goal from the three. With three receivers split out to the far side. Josh Davis, the running back. Now into the game behind Barron. Davis had a Rushing touchdown on the last drive for the Wildcats. Barron, middle of the field, leads his receiver too far. Intended for Ty McPherson. Looked like he had a step on his man, but Barron just couldn't squeeze it in. And it looks like Weber State will. Yeah, what do you do if you're Jay Hill here? There comes the field goal unit. Jay Hill thought about it for a second. And the field goal unit, although I will say this, considering Jay Hill and the way his defense is playing, would not surprise me to see something here. Bit of a gunslinger. Kyle Thompson already has one field goal today of 33 yards. This one certainly more manageable at 20. Holder is Jack Burgess. Hold down, kick up, and the kick is good. And Weaver State, after Utah State defensively gets the stop and holds the field goal. That's an important possession for Utah State after Weaver State had it first and goal from, I believe, what, the six yard line. That's right. A win for the Aggie defense for sure. And Barron had Ty McPherson breaking open in the back of the end zone, but was unable to make the connection. But the Weaver State scoring drive went five yards in four plays, 57 seconds. And Thompson knocked through the 20 yard field goal to give the Wildcats the six point lead. And this pigskin scoring summary is brought to you by your Utah pork producers. For more information, visit pork.org. Terrell Vaughn, who has a 100-yard kickoff return. That's the only point so far for Utah State. Weber State with already 156 yards of total offense in the first quarter to the Aggies, 48. Been very dominant here in the first quarter, both on offense and defense. They've got the turnover, and they've been moving the ball up and down the field on offense. Here comes the kickoff, and taking a no, it'll be uh, bouncing out of the back of the end zone. You can tell Vaughn wants to take a crack at another one. There's a little bit of that save on Scarver desire to want to bring one back. Yeah. After getting the taste of one. Now the Aggie offense has got to get on track. As you said, Scotty, only 48 yards so far here in the first quarter. Logan Bonner, two of five for only 18 yards and the interception. Calvin Tyler has six carries for 30 yards, and now Lockheed Makakona is going to get his crack at running back. 
Makikona for the second consecutive game is the first running back off the bench. Logan Bonner will give it to Makikona. He puts his head down, gets past the 30 to the 32-yard line, still pushing to about the 33-yard line. Nice gain of nine on first down by Lake Makakona. That may be the adjustment. Instead of the zone read, maybe with Lakakona, you just go north and south and try to just beat this Weber State defensive front. Only a three-man front, but seven in the box for the Wildcats. Give it to Makakona again, and he is met at the 35-yard line, pushes to the 36. That's good enough for a first down as the Aggies able to stretch things out. That's a Smith Marketplace first down. You got Alfred Edwards, Wade Beecham, Chandler Dolphin, Waylon Lapawaho, and Jacob South up front for the Aggie offensive line. Weber State shows so many different variations along that defensive line. Fake the handoff, Bonner steps up in the pocket. He's throwing right, he's looking for McGriff and over the head of his intended receiver as McGriff pushed out of bounds and unable to come back in and fight for an opportunity to snag that thing. Have not really targeted Brian Cobbs only one time against Eddie Heckert, the all-conference cornerback over there on the wide side. This time Logan Bonner had pressure in his face, threw it off the back foot sooner than he wanted to. He had McGriff breaking open a little bit late, but the ball was out in front. Makakona stays in a running back, stack receivers to the far side. McGriff, the wide receiver to the near side. Tight end to the far side as well. Weaver State shows a four-man front, handoff to Makakona. Weaver State looks like it's got it stacked up. They do, only a gain of two or three to about the 39-yard line. And it'll be another third down coming up for Utah State. Aggies 0 for 3 on third down so far in this game with 2.03 left here in the first quarter, trailing 13 to 7. And again, so difficult when you run the ball in second and long and you don't do very much with it to always be in third and long situations. So difficult to keep the chains moving. And Weber State showing that three-man front. Might be trying to tempt Utah State into running it on third and long, something Anthony Tucker is more than willing to do. Fake the handoff. Bonner looking right, throwing right. Has a man nearly intercepted. Van Leeuwen was bracketed by Desmond Williams and others, and really no chance to complete that pass, and fortunately not intercepted. Yeah, Logan Bonner threw it into harm's way that time, and you're right, Maxwell Anderson and Desmond Williams. Anderson had two interceptions a week ago against Western Oregon. I think Logan Bonner had predetermined he wanted to throw that dig route to Kyle Van Leeuwen before the play even began. So Weber State defensively has held Utah State 0 for 4 on third down. Cottonley booms this one away, and it will fall out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it at the 10-yard line. So great punt by Stephen Cottonley as Weber State will start this next possession at the 9 and a half. With 128 left here in the first. They want to be the MVP of your patio. Let the team of experts at Barbecue Pit Stop help with your grilling, smoking, and barbecue needs from smoker to pizza ovens and all the meats. At their butcher shop, go to Barbecue Pit Stop 400 North in Logan. So they got the first down, initial first down on the two carries from Makakona, but unable to convert on a third and long, give the ball back to the Wildcats, who got a lot of juice on offense with 156 yep. yards of total offense. Maggie just can't seem to capture that offensive magic they had last year. Handoff, Davis hit at the line, will fall to the 11. Good job by Utah State smothering that inside draw. Davis is only able to manage one yard on the run. Actually, good run by Josh Davis to evade the backfield. MJ Tafisi was right there, he was able to sidestep, but the Aggie defense was there to converge. Be huge for this Aggie defense to maybe get a three and out here and give that offense some field position. Weber State slowing things down here a little bit. One minute left here in the first quarter. Wildcats leading 13 to seven over Utah State. Bronson Barron hands off. And Davis is able to skip past the 15 to the 17. It'll be third and three coming up for the Wildcats. And you see the athleticism and the explosiveness of Josh Davis able to just fire through the hole and able to pick up five yards. And pressing the line of scrimmage and then just getting to the outside a little bit. We've seen that now three times for Bankston and Davis. Hayes Hadley, keep an eye on him. He's got one catch today. Shifts to the near side of the field. Two receivers, Aggie fans on their feet. Third and three for Weaver State. A direct snap taken and falling down. Davis can't get it. Weaver State trying to run a, a play, a, a trick play, with Bronson Barron walking over the sideline to give a direct snap to Davis, and Davis falls forward on a bad snap, too. And the Aggies are going to get the three and out. 
But we saw that from Utah State a year ago in the bowl game with El Leon Noah and uh, Cooper Lega. But Davis was not quite ready for the snap, and the Aggies are going to get the three now. Yep. Fortunate as That's we come to the, the end quarter. of the Time first quarter. The Utah field. State will force a punt. Should get good field position when we come back. Aggies trailing Weaver State 13 to 7. You're listening to Aggie football from Learfield. Utah State trailing Weber State 13 to 7. Ford Truck Month is going on now at your local Ford stores with new inventory arriving daily. Now is the best time to check out the F-150 Ranger Maverick and even the all-new electric Ford F-150 Lightning. Visit your local Ford store to learn how you can get premium complimentary maintenance and rate lock when you build and order the Ford that's right for you only during Ford Truck Month. All right, Utah State will get the ball back. Weber State forced to punt. As the Aggies should come away with some pretty good field position here. The quarter that was really dominated by Weber State. 163 yards of total offense. Bronson Barron in that first quarter, 3 of 8 for 86 yards, including that 61-yard go route to Ty McPherson. Weber State carried the ball 15 times for 77 yards in that first quarter, including Josh Davis, 7 for 37 in the 17-yard touchdown, and Devon Bankston, 5 for 34. Now the Aggie offense had a little bit of something going on the opening possession, gave it back after the false start penalty, and oh, by the way, five penalties for Utah State for 53 yards in that first quarter. Set to pump this thing away for Weber State. Jack Burgess only needed a punt twice last week against Western Oregon, 41-yard average. Also an Aussie, just like his buddy Stephen Kotzenly. Aggies bring some pressure, unable to get to it. And the fair catch signal taken at the 35-yard line. Good punt by Weber State. Anytime you're punt from your end zone and you push it from 35 yards in, that's a success as Utah State will start at their own 35. These Aussies know how to kick the ball. Well, and Jay Hill, you go all the way back to, uh, you know, they've been, he's had that connection for a long, long time in being able to find that pipeline of, of great quality punters that have come and had a lot of success. So, Scotty, Logan Bonner is only two of seven for 18 yards in the interception and has thrown the ball into some coverage, thrown a ball high that got intercepted, just still not quite all the way confident yet on that left leg. Briggs in at running back, dump it down to Sturzer. Sturzer has met hard on the out route and gains only about a yard and a half, and a late flag is thrown, and we might have a targeting. Yeah. That is number nine who came in, Nasami Colvin, led the team of three and a half TFLs last week. Put his head down, and let's see what we have. A little fake, and then a pitch out to Josh Sturzer. That sure looked like helmet to helmet contact. Took the side judge a little bit of time to throw the flag. Have not seen a replay on it yet. Get it now. Yeah, it's Colvin, number nine. Foul. Charging, number nine. Defense. 15 yards from the end run, automatic. First down. By the way, is under further review. They'll take a look at it for sure, but Coleman is a really big part of what Weber State does defensively. A really, really good player. So we mentioned had two and a half or three and a half TFLs last week. He flies all over the field, makes big plays. And again, we do not have a review on this yet. I've not seen a replay. It's going to the booth. So we'll have to wait and see. So one from the high 
above the stadium look, but haven't seen one up close yet. 13 to seven is our score, 14-45 left to go here in the second quarter. After previous review, there is no foul for target. The ball returns to the previous spot, second down. All right. We don't get a replay of it, and I guess if you're watching on the Mountain West Network, you don't get a replay of it either. So there you go. Colvin stays in the game, and Utah State will have a second and nine coming up at the 36-yard line. Would love to get a look at it. Just haven't had a, a chance to get one yet. Must have been pretty conclusive because quick. that was one of the quickest replays you've ever seen. So, And maybe they didn't have one either, but if they didn't have a review, they had to hold it as it was called. That is a targeting penalty Whoa. for sure to son finally Colvin dipped his head right into Sturzer. Two to the far, one to the near. Logan Bonner looking for it all. Cobbs is there. Caught. No, he didn't bring it in. Oh, man. Right in his bread basket. Couldn't reel it in at the 31-yard line. Thought for sure he had a catch, and Cobbs just couldn't quite bring it in. Beautiful throw from Logan Bonner down the Aggie sideline. First time we've seen Cobbs up against Heckard, and he had a step on him. And by the way, we finally are seeing a look at that previous play. It was absolutely a targeting penalty, but they called it off. Three to the far, one to the near, third and nine. Coming up for Utah State, Briggs at running back. As Weaver State brings a blitz and trying to throw the screen, and Logan's just got to burn it at the feet. Beautiful defense by Weaver State as the Aggies now 0 of 5 on third down, trying to set up the screen. Weaver State had the blitz, but also came out to cover Briggs. Can't cover it better than that. And Utah State goes three and out. Garrett Beck, the weak side linebacker, just stayed right at home with Briggs. The Aggie offensive line let everybody through, and they were making their way out to the right-hand side, but nowhere to go with the football for Logan Bonner. Stephen Cotson Lee, so we have a battle of Australian punters, gets the snap, gets his foot underneath this one, and this is a beauty as well. Having to track it all the way down to the 10, and it stops at the 10, rolls to the six-yard line, and Weber State will start this drive inside their own 10-yard line. Timeout on the field. So 13 to seven, Weber State leads by six. 14-15 left here in the first half. You're listening to Aggie football from Learfield. With 12 institutions nestled in the nation's most desirable destinations, you'll see us enjoying life at the peak of celebration. As you witness us not only win, but win the right way, you'll find us competing at the peak of integrity. As our more than 5,000 student athletes take the field of play with unequaled passion, you'll find us performing at the peak of competition. The Mountain West is at the peak. Welcome back to Maverick Stadium, Utah State trailing Weaver State 13 to 7, 14 16 left in the game. Hey, how'd you like to be able to listen to us while synced up in the TV, uh, synced up to your TV in the comfort of your own home? Go to syncmygame.com. That's syncmygame.com to find out how. Let's pause 10 seconds for local stations to identify themselves. You're listening to Aggie Football from Learfield. Utah State 13-7, 14-16 left here in the first half as for all intents and purposes, Weber State has dominated this game. Bronson Barron in pistol, direct handoff, and that Utah State defense with a tackle all the way back to the five-yard line, a loss of one on the play. I believe it was Bankston at running back, unable to get any yards, it was. This is where Efren Bonda has really made his money making those adjustments between the first and the second quarter. Gave up 186 yards of offense in that, 156 yards of offense in that first quarter, but now making the adjustments with Weber State backed up. Ty McPherson split to the near side, two receivers to the far side. 
Again, pistol formation for Bronson Barron, who has to step a yard deep in his own end zone. Barron looks right. Now has to roll out to the right. He's got a lot of room if he wants to run, and he does. Gets past the 10 to the 12 and knocked out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. Right at the 15-yard line, it'll set up about a third and one. Wanted to go out to the right. Nobody there. Came back to the left towards the Aggie sideline, and then there was no defenders there. Was able to get upfield, and MJ Tafisi fortunate not to be called for a late hit out of bounds. Weaver stayed on third down, one for four. It's third and about a yard. 15, you gotta get to the 16 for a first. Bankston a running back. Malone is your tight end coming in motion to the near side. Hand off, met at the line, it'll be close. Far side receiver, or far side official, and yep, the near side official comes in and says, move the chains, that's a first down. He needed one and he got one. Had Hunter Reynolds right in the hole, but just a little bit of momentum and forward lean from Bankston got him to the first down sticks. Big first down for Weaver State. Trying to play the field position battle. 12.42 left here in the first half with Weaver State leading 13 to seven. Bronson Barron with Bankston to his right. They hand off to Bankston once again, and he's hit right at the line. Gain of maybe a half yard on the play. As Weaver State challenging that Utah State defensive line, Weaver State offensively from the rushing attack already have 87 yards on the ground, 37 from Davis, 34 from Bankston. A good play this time from A.J. Carter coming off the near side corner, has coming on a little bit of a late delayed blitz, was able to fit the run hole and stop Bankston for a short gain. Two receivers now to the far side. I formation with Bronson Barron, Josh Davis back in at running back. Pistol formation, Davis goes in motion to the far side, out of the backfield, Aggies bring blitz, looking for Davis, Davis has it at the 15 yard line, breaks one tackle past the 20, and gets to about the 26 yard line, where it'll be third and one once again. Good job by Josh Davis, breaking the open field tackle against, I believe, uh, was it Holly Matuapuaka? Gervin Hall. Oh, Gervin Hall, excuse yep. me, number Gervin, six. Gervin Hall had him, they had Kaleo Nevis coming out of the, the post position, out of the the striker position on the blitz. And another Aggie down on the far side of the field. Not only is Utah State struggling on the scoreboard, there's been several players who've had a hard time staying out on the field. A couple on that defensive front. We know that Motuapawaka perhaps was not able to go yep, this afternoon. That's why when I saw the eight, yep. That might be Pat Joyner Jr. perhaps. Is it zero out there? Hard to get a number. Utah State trailing 13 to seven. It'll be another third and one coming up for the Wildcats. Timeout on the field. Big thanks to DL Evans Bank for supporting Aggie Athletics. DL Evans Bank, a community bank with local employees helping their communities succeed. So another big third down coming up when we come back. 11.45 left to go of first half action. Wildcats have come to play today, folks, leading Utah State 13 to seven. This is Aggie football from Learfield. to seven is the score Utah State and Weber State with Weber State leading by six Weber State's already converted one third and one on this drive and they've got another one coming up at their own 25 yard line needing to get to the 26 for a first down the injured Aggie was uh, Tavian Coleman the backup defensive end for Utah State 6'1 280 pound sophomore out of Texas they had Kaleo Nevis coming on the blitz out of the striker position and 
Bronson Barron recognized it, got it out to Davis, who made a man miss. I think that was Gervin Hall that missed him. Tavian Coleman trailing from behind, was able to stop him short of the first down. Keep an eye on McPherson. He is all by himself with a Johnny Carter here to the near side. And the ball off the intended receiver. Oh, they're going to call a, wow, they false it start dead. before. <laughs> oh, man, that would have been a big play for Utah State. They brought a man in motion, snapped it. It hit the receiver in motion and was. Prior to the snap, false start, number 96, offense. The best Five false start that possibly could have happened for Weber State. Cut. Although I do think the timing of that play probably was affected by the whistle. For sure, and the uh, far side official threw the flag and blew it dead immediately. But that was all sorts of discombobulated for Weber State. Yep. All right, here we go. Pistol formation, third and one, now becomes third and six. Josh Davis shifts out of the pistol, lines up with Baron Davis. Motion man coming to the near side. Barron drops back, has pressure, steps out of it, steps right, is going to keep it himself and stop to the 22-yard line. Gain of two on the play. The Aggies doing a great job bringing Barron down before he's able to get first down yardage. Open field tackling, and the Wildcats forced to punt. Great pressure up front from Byron Vaughns, Pat Joyner Jr. And then as he broke contain, it was Ike Larson, the young man out of Smithfield Skyview High School who had an interception and a blocked punt last week against Alabama that was able to stop him short. Cooper Jones at his own 30-yard line waiting for the punt. It is a short punt. Cooper's got to come all the way up, takes a beautiful Weber State bounce all the way to the 32-yard line. And with that, the Aggie offense, which has been somewhat anemic to start this game, gets another crack at it, trailing 13-7. to That was really a saving tackle for Mike Larson because Barron had open field. Larson was able to get him down. And the Aggies now on offense, only 63 yards of total offense here in this game. With 10.33 to go in the second quarter, Logan Bonner only three of 10. Got to figure some things out. He's got good protection. Let some things develop and see if they can take some shots down the field. Two to the receivers, the far one to the near. Calvin Tyler back in a running back. Bonner surveys the field to the outside. Caught by Van Leeuwen. Gets past the 50 to the 49-yard line of Weber State. Van Leeuwen, a beautiful pitch and catch from Logan Bonner, his best throw of the day. A little out route from Van Leeuwen, who secured it in front of Maxwell Anderson, and a beautiful throw Aggies, from Logan Bonner. Aggies right back to the line. Looked like some movement before the line. Hand off to Tyler. Tyler is dropped right at the line, unable to get any yards past that. Garrett Beck able to get the stop. No gain on the play. Good looking linebacker. He had an interception a week ago against Western Oregon. 6'4, 220 pound sophomore. Second and 11. It'll be official one yard loss for Utah State. Fake the handoff to Tyler. Bonner all day to throw, looking to the outside and way overthrows his intended receiver, Van Lewin, who is bracketed and really not a chance to really fit that in there either. In between the safety, Colvin out there in the corner, Camden Garrett. Kind of sat it down right in the pocket there on the sideline. A little bit of a fade route. Bonner threw it out of bounds and, and wide. Third and 11, press coverage to the far side on McGriff. Let's see if Bonner looks that way. Three-man front. Tight end goes in motion to the far side. Then Bonner looks to the near side. Cobbs and Van Leeuwen, your receivers to the near side. Big third down here. Let's see if the Aggies can at least get some yardage. Think about a, oh, the handoff to Tyler, and Tyler met at the line, bounces out of it, tries to get to the outside, but he's snowed under a three-yard loss. And again, the Aggies with a third and long go for the inside draw once again, and Aggies just haven't had a lot of success with that this year when they go to that play. I know the principle is that you've got a five-man box, and when you got the five-man box, the principle says you should check to the run. But when you're third and 11, you got to press the envelope. That might be a Logan Bonner call right there, where he's got the option. You got to know the down and distance and take your shots. So another opportunity for Utah State, unable to convert a third down. This is a low line drive knuckleball taken at the 14 yard line and ripped down at the 17 yard line as Weber State will start another drive inside their 20. Field position battle leaning towards Utah State, but the Aggies unable to take advantage of that. Get the first down throw to Kyle Van Leeuwen on a beautiful out route. Then miss Van Leeuwen on the fade route. And then on third and 11, 
content to stay with the run game with that five man box and just not able to get any movement against this Weber State defense. Utah State only 11 carries for 41 yards here in the first half. It's one of those games where Utah State has been sluggish offensively, starting to get a little bit better defensively, but this Weber State offense can certainly get into a groove in a hurry. They've proven to be explosive. Had the McPherson 61 yard catch in the first quarter. Barron throwing the slant wide open is sharp. Gets past the 30, turns the corner, gets past the 40, pushes out of bounds at the 45 yard line. As Sharp gets a big gain for the Wildcats. And just like that, they're back in moving offensively. Been their best play, that zone read fake, and then the simple in cut on the slant. This time Sharp was able to get in front of Gervin Hall and then outrun the defenders for the big game. Jacob Sharp has had himself a day. Barron straight drop back. He's looking deep. He's looking to the far side. It's caught all the way down to the 30-yard line. Sharp once again up against Nwanyu. It's down to the Aggie 30-yard line. Just a back shoulder fade route. Nwanyu uh, had his back to the play. Sharp went up and over the top of him and made the catch. And a great throw from Bronson Barron. Bankston at running back. Barron wants to throw again, has pressure, steps out of it, looks to the far side of the field. McPherson is there, tipped up. Hunter Reynolds nearly comes away with the interception, closing in as the safety, but the ball falls incomplete. Good job by Reynolds tracking that down. He had it in his sights, and now he goes down at the goal line. A.J. Carter was matched up with McPherson. They forced Barron out to the left and threw it up there for McPherson to go get it. Hunter Reynolds really had his eyes on an interception. And it was McPherson and A.J. Carter that ran into him. You got a Wildcat down. Looks like you got a Wildcat player cramping at the far sideline. Hunter Reynolds gets up, and he will walk back to the sideline under his own power. It's a warm day out there. Not, not nearly what we saw two weeks ago, but, Kevin, we're approaching six full quarters of Utah State without scoring an offensive point. Their one touchdown today coming on a kickoff return for a score just been hard for this offense to really get on track. They've not been very efficient on first down. They need to get better offensively on first down to give them second and third opportunities that are more convertible. So far here in the first quarter, in the first half, only five first downs to 12 for Weber State. And that was the right guard, Jordan Latui. Hand off to Bankston. Bankston hit at the line. Pinballs to the 29-yard line. It'll be third and nine coming up. Aggies doing a much better job against the rushing attack here in the second quarter than the first. That was the uh, replacement for Hunter Reynolds, Dom Tatum, that came in and made the big hit to set up the big third down. With Jordan Latouille, the right guard, who went out cramping for Weber State, Hunter Reynolds right back in the game for Utah State. Need that presence of Hunter Reynolds for sure. All right, here we go. Third and nine at the 29-yard line. Weber State needs to get the Aggie 20 for a first down. Hand off to Bankston. Bankston hit behind the line. He'll lose a yard back to the 30. And now a long field goal attempt coming up for Weber State. In the first quarter, they got Utah State on that little off tackle on a third and long for Bankston. This time, A.J. Funk Pachon was right there to make the hit in the TFL. Boy, both teams trying to test the other defense with long running plays or with running plays on third and long. So here comes Kyle Thompson attempting what will be a 47 yard field goal attempt. Certainly has the leg. His long last year was 48. Hold down, gets it away. It's low, but certainly long enough. No good, he missed it. So the Aggies saw Weber State mow right down the field. Finally saw the drive Time stall at the 30, the and Utah State is able to get the ball with seven minutes left here in the second quarter, trailing 13-7. Take a break, come back. This is Aggie football from Learfield. Your one stop for all college sports is the brand new Varsity Network website, thevarsitynetwork.com. Keep up with your favorite teams and the rest of college sports no matter where you are with thevarsitynetwork.com. Be sure to check out the Varsity Network website.
Seven minutes left to go here in the second quarter. 13-7, Weber State leading by six. 239 yards of total offense for Weber State versus 79. Really dominating this first half. The Aggie defense has been opportunistic. Got the Michael Onyamu interception. They forced the missed field goal here. And then obviously special teams has kind of kept him in it. This offense is still just not in rhythm. Calvin Tyler to the right of Logan Bonner. Two receivers in the near, one to the far. Hand off to Tyler. Tries to test that middle of that Weber State defense right into the teeth, and he gets nothing. No gain on the play. Aggie Faith a little bit restless right now with this Aggie offense. Calvin Tyler now nine attempts for only 27 yards. Most of it come, came on the first carry of the game, too. A 20-yard carry to open the game. Hand off to Tyler once again, and Tyler hit, and Tyler will get nothing. And there's your Boo Birds. Anthony Tucker still stubborn in the run game. Second and long, over and over again. I know that that's that box, but Weber State is flowing very quickly with those safeties coming up to the line of scrimmage. And they cannot afford a three and out right here as that defense has been on the football field a long time here in the first half. 15, 14 to 7, 46, time of possession. And a three-man front for Weber State, kind of daring Utah State to run it again. Logan Bonner won't. Checks down, middle of the field, and nearly intercepted. Oh, my goodness. Heckard almost got away with one as the ball intended for Cobbs goes off his hands, and Heckard nearly had a pick. Coach Anderson not happy with the official. He thought that Heckard kind of tugged Cobbs and turned him just a little bit before the ball got there. Coach Cephalo, the wide receiver coach, also right there against the official, but a very, very quick three and out for that Aggie offense. So Weber State gets the three and out. Aggies now on the night, 0 of 7 on third down. And just cannot generate anything offensively. Constantly with yet another punt. And this one's a bit of a shank, might get a good bounce and will mosey its way on down to the, about the 27 yard line. Not a shank, that's not a fair way to describe it, just kind of a low knuckle ball and took a bounce and Weber State with reasonably good field position at their own 27. A lot of questions right now for this Aggie offense. A position in a group that we thought would be a little more dynamic than what we're seeing. Really good Weber State defensive football team. You can see it out there for sure. But you, you just feel like the Aggie offense right now a little bit snake bit, unable to convert anything on first down to give them a second and third and manageable so far here in the first half. Now, Aggies have been playing with fire. Weber State with only one touchdown and two field goals, but the Wildcats certainly have shown the ability to move up and down the field. Hand off to Davis. Davis gets around one block or one tackle, gets to about the 36 yard line, a gain of eight on first down. He is shifty, he is fun to watch. Only 195 pounds, but does a great job pressing that line of scrimmage, finding the crease, and then just bursting through it and accelerating. Now with eight carries and 46 yards so far here in the first half. Three receivers to the near side, all to the boundary. Davis and pistol, let's see if he shifts out of it. He does not. Hand off to Davis, and Davis will have the first down by about a yard to the 38-yard line. And that moves the chains. Weber State on their side of the field, but picking up a first down. Total yards in this game, Weber State 248, Utah State 80. Rushing yards, 101 to the Aggie 42. Only 38 yards passing for Utah State in this game as we're under five minutes here in the second quarter with Weber State leading 13 to seven. And Bronson Barron, six of 12 for 147 yards, but getting it done on the, on the ground right now with that big offensive front up front. Meacham, the Tight end, shifts to the right, hand off to Davis. Davis has some room to the outside, past the 45, ripped down at the 50, that's a gain of 13, as he gets past the 50 to the 49 yard line. And as I was giving credit to that Utah State defense against the run, now Weber State starting to gash him a bit with 4.30 left to go, as he feels like this Aggie defense is saying, hey, can we just get into halftime? Been on the field a long, long time here in the first half. Time of possession, 15-14 to 8.58. Doubled up Woo. Utah State. Now, a lot of that might, I mean, some of that, I won't say a lot of it, some of it's because of the kickoff return, but that's not seven minutes worth right there. This offensive front is really dominating the line of scrimmage. 
Delayed handoff to Davis. Davis gets past 45 fumble. Who's got it? I think Weber State fell on it. As Weber State able to fall on the loose ball, pick up another yard to the 42 yard line. In all, that'll be a gain of seven. Good job by, I believe it was Hayden Meacham. Hayden Meacham yep. that's able to fall on that loose ball. Aggies could have used that in a big way. i just about ready to say the Aggie defense really needs a turnover. Josh Davis coughs it up, but there's Hayden Meacham, the brother of Wade, Utah State offensive lineman, right there to scoop it up. Two receivers of the near, one to the far. And certainly Weber State now slowing it down a little bit, bleeding the clock. Barron. Looking right, throwing middle of the field, incomplete, off the hands of his intended receiver. Hayes Hadley had it. May have led him a bit too far, but Hadley unable to bring it in. It'll be third and four coming up. I think Barron was going for yeah, Jacob too. Sharp, and Hadley, who was coming in on the little crosser, reached up and tipped it away. I think Sharp would have had it there for the first down. So another big third down, although knowing Jay Hill on this side of the 50, this is probably four down territory for him especially the way his defense is played. Here we go, third and three. Wildcats need to get to the Aggie 39-yard line. And a late flag, and they're going to call a false start on Weber State. So the third and three to a third and eight. False start, number 74, offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. So back it up five to the 47 yard line. It'll be third and eight for Weber State. This is where Mickey Mental and uh, Jay Hill have been willing to run the football on third and long. That little off tackle play. Utah State's gonna come out with the Prowler. They were able to get him in the first quarter with this Prowler. Let's see how Efren Bonda dials it up here. Bankston's the running back to the right of Barron. Big play here. Aggie show pressure. Barron looking deep, looking for his intended receiver incomplete to the near side. It was intended for McCaffrey, or excuse me, McPherson. I believe you're going to get an offsides on Utah State, though. Bonds may have just barely crossed the line. Offsides, number 11, defense. Five yard penalty, you play third down. Bonds jumped and then tried to get back. And it was really close, but the official said, no, nah, you still had a foot over that line. And so a free play to McPherson is incomplete. But instead of third and eight, it's now third and three. I think Bronson Barron was able to recognize he had the yep. offside play and took the shot to McPherson. Bankston still in a running back. Here we go, third and three, folks. Motion to the near side is sharp. Hand off to Bankston. Bankston is close, late stretch, gets him the first down. Wow, Bankston held up at the 40, but able to push the ball forward to the 39, and that's a Weber State first down. Really good effort there by Bankston to slither and slide and lunge forward to get to the sticks. Keeping the drive alive and Weber State chewing up all of the clock here to end the first, the, the first half. Remember, Weber State will also get the ball to start the third quarter as well. Bankston stays in a running back. McPherson comes in motion. Fake the handoff to Bankston, throwing to the outside. Back shoulder fade, little too far behind the intended receiver, Sharp. Ball's incomplete, second and 10 coming up. This went on Bronson Barron, because he had some space out there. Threw it behind Jacob Sharp. Matched up with Anyan Wu. 13 to seven, our score, 235 left here in the second quarter. Weaver State picked to finish fourth in the Big Sky, coming off a six and five season. Take a look at football squad. Big up front on offense, in the offensive line, able to get some movement in the running game. Already 126 yards rushing in the first half. High formation. Bankston trying to get to the outside, and he has met, hit hard, tries to step out of a tackle, will gain about one more yard out of it to the 38-yard line. Good job. It'll be 39 coming up, though. Bankston does not go down easy, and Utah State calls a timeout to try to save some time offensively. Sensing an opportunity maybe to get a stop here and give that offense a little bit of time to take a crack at it. Bankston running hard. Between he and Davis, between the two of them, 23 carries here timeout. in the first half. Utah State, their first time out of the half. Right. 30 seconds in the week. 
Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems are proud sponsors of Utah State. See your local Bryant dealers to upgrade to a high efficiency heating and cooling system. Bryant, whatever it takes. Well, whatever it takes for Utah State, they got to find a way to get off the field. This is not going the way that I think a lot of Aggie fans thought it would with the Aggies trailing by six with 227 left here in the first half. And you have to say to a large degree, fortunate to only be down six. Yep. Oh, yeah, for sure. And the only points on the board is the kick six from Terrell Bonds. Weber State has dominated the course of play here in the first half. They've had the football for almost three times as much time as Utah State. A lot of stuff to work out in the locker room, but Blake Anderson sensing an opportunity here to get a third down stop and maybe give that Aggie offense one more crack at it before the break. One receiver to the far side, bunch formation for the Wildcats. Josh Davis, your running back. Meet him at tight end. In tight. And Barron hit and picked up. It's picked up by Utah State. Knocked out of the hands of Barron and coming up with a pick. How about that? Bill Pam whips it out of the air, and that is an Aggie interception. And it was Byron Vaughns who had the pressure in the face of Barron. The ball popped up, and Pea was able to snag it, and the Aggies are in business. That, the half. that is what Utah State needed. I don't know if uh, you can count that as a fumble recovery or an interception. Either way, Pea is going to say, I don't get a lot of picks. I'm going to count it as an interception. <laughs> They're going to mark it back at the 48-yard line, but great pressure from Byron Vaughns, and Philip Pia was able to snag it. Arm was coming forward a little bit. I think that is an INT for Philip Pia. All right, here we go. Utah State with the ball at the Wildcat 48-yard line. Defense gave the offense a gift. Let's see if Utah State can cash in. Fly sweep to Cobbs. Cobbs gets to the 40. Cobbs spun down to the 38-yard line. Or was that Davis? Terrell Vaughn. Terrell Vaughn. There you go. Coming from the far side slot. You got an 8, 6, and a 0 that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what a great play by Philip Pia as well. Byron Vaughn's had the pressure, but Pia was able to recognize it and pull it out of midair for the interception. Chandler Dolphin has to come out of the game. I don't know if it's an equipment issue or something's going on. I think something's wrong with his knee brace. He's got to check out. Three receivers all to the boundary. Makakona's a running back. Bonner throwing deep down the far sideline. Van Lewin can't get it. Let him way too far out of bounds. Second and 10 coming up. So I think Logan Bonner really wanted to run pace, but Chandler Dolphin happened to come off to the sideline, forces them to slow down. Pulealo comes in, a little inside fade route to Kyle Van Leeuwen. Really good coverage from this Weber State secondary. Cobbs to the near side, receivers to the far side, McGriff and Van Leeuwen. Makakona is your running back. Aggies have the ball at the Weber State 37-yard line. Throwing right, caught by Cobbs. Cobbs to the 25, still muscling forward to about the 24-yard line. Big first down by Utah State with 155 left in the half, and the Aggies trying to get points and take the lead back. Great little zone read pitch out to Brian Cobbs. Makakona to the to left. left. And incomplete. incomplete. By the way, by the way Eric, we're getting, we're getting double, double audio, audio. If you, you can fix, fix that, that for me. me. Same play this time to the near side to Brian Cobbs, a little bit too far to the boundary. He ate, actually was able to catch it with one hand, but was out of bounds. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near. Makakona to the right of Bonner. Aggies have it second and 10 at the 22 yard line. Aggies don't want a field goal here. Hand off to Makakona. Makakona is able to push the pile to about the 20 yard line. Give him a nice four yard game. It'll be third and six coming up. Again, running that ball on second and long. And I think this is Makakona now down. Hops back up, still not quite right. He's gonna need to come to the sideline. A lot of dings and bangs in this first half for Utah State. Makakona takes the helmet off and walks to the sideline. That'll bring Calvin Tyler back in on a big third down opportunity for Utah State, who's inside the Aggie Blue Zone for the first time this afternoon. The America First Blue Zone. All right, one receiver to the near, two to the far. 
Calvin Tyler, the running back. We've seen one series with Briggs, the freshman phenom. Also seen Brock Lane, a tight end out there right now. And a handoff to Tyler on third and long. Tyler moves the pile. He'll be close to a first down. I believe he might be about a half yard shy. Yep, fourth down. Wow. So third and seven and a half. He got about seven. And let's see what the Aggies do. They're right back to the line. I think Blake Anderson says, let's go. If you're going to do it, you got to do it quick. 50 seconds left. Officials taking a long time spotting Spot that Spot the ball. And let's go. Here we go. Three-man front. Weaver State blitzes. Tyler's got the first down. Tyler's got more. Down to the five-yard line. And only a shoestring tackle keeps him away from scoring. First down, Utah State at the Weaver State six. Calvin Tyler comes up hobbling as well. Kind of twisted the ankle. 37 seconds left. Clock will start. Bonner under center. And Bonner lost the hand or lost the snap, is able to fall on it. Oh my goodness. 27 seconds. I think he just wanted to spike it. And he lost the handle. And that forces Blake Anderson to burn a timeout because he did want to spike it right there. Although with that much time left, I don't know why you want to waste a down. They may, right they may have been trying to run maybe a a gadget play Utah or something. State. Their second timeout of the half. 30 seconds and late. Timeout on the field. Almost a disastrous event there by Utah State. As Bonner, again, was motioning that he was going to spike it. I believe they were probably trying to do something. Honestly, Maybe. looking at the replay, I don't know if Alo thought that he was under center. Maybe he was planning to fake the spike and then come to the to the fade ball. Disaster averted for Utah State. The Aggies burned the timeout. Lose a few on the play. Yeah. That's normally a play that you would have with Chandler Dolphin at center and not Pule Alo. But Dolphin had to come out earlier in the possession. So it's second and goal from the eight yard line. 27 seconds left. Plenty of time. You got all, time shouldn't be a real issue here. With one timeout remaining, you're right. Still plenty of time to, to make your play calls. Maka Kona now back in for Calvin Tyler. Two receivers on each side for Bonner. Weaver State shows blitz. Maka Kona motions out of the backfield. Bonner's got time into the end zone, over the head of his intended receiver. There's the late flag as Cobbs got pushed in the back. And that will give the Aggies a first down and half the distance to the goal. And also a penalty in the backfield. I think they hit Bonner late. I think he might get multiple fouls here on Weber State that will give the Aggies a first and goal inside the five. You have a timeout with 22 seconds, so you can run the ball here. And you just feel like this is such a big part of this ball game if Utah State can punch one in. The interception from Paya. The Aggies now with a crack to get it in the end zone. A lot of discussion from the officials. There is no foul for up the passer. Holding number five, defense in the end zone. Half the distance to go, automatic first down. Neither one of those was going to be half the distance. Not so that, that will mark the ball at about the three and a half. Not sure why they waved off the roughing the passer penalty as well, but. Weber State trying to muscle up Utah State on defense. Playing very physical and getting in the face of this Aggie offense. Logan Bonner now, that veteran signal caller, has got to find a way to get him in the end zone. Here we go. First and goal from the four. 22 seconds left. Hand off to Makakona. Makakona pushes the pile forward, but he gets to about the two-yard line, and now the Aggies are going to have to burn that timeout with 15 seconds left. They'll let the clock get to about 14, and now... That takes away your luxury to run the football. Most likely. We've only seen really. Timeout, Utah State. Their third final timeout of the half. So Police now you're in a situation. Seconds back on the game clock. So now Four you're. All right, thank you. Now you're in a situation where you can't take a sack. Yep. I mean, you, do you dare run it here? I don't think no. so. I think you got to throw it now with 16 seconds to go. You got to run that, or, uh, throw the football. Haven't seen any tight ends really targeted inside the red zone so far this season. This is where Carson Terrell a year ago, and before that, Dax oh, yeah. Raymond yep. were so critical. Maybe it's Parker Buchanan, maybe it's Josh Sturzer, because right now they're playing very physical on the outside with Brian Cobbs, and really only one target to Justin McGriff. Haven't seen the fade target yet to McGriff either. Let's see what kind of lineup they get. 
Got to believe press man coverage from Weaver State. And really nothing outside of that opening carry for Calvin Tyler to start the game in the middle of the run game. Calvin Tyler, the running back to the right of Logan Bonner. Aggies don't have any timeouts left. Bonner looks right, throwing right, looking for Cobbs. Cobbs not able to bring a foot down. Was muscled on the far Ooh, sideline. Could so not done. get a foot in, caught it, but pushed out of bounds. Wow, a lot of pan fighting from that cornerback. Is that Heckard again? A out there, man-to-man, -to -man, it is Heckard. A lot of jostling yep. out there. The third baseman, Cobbs did catch it, but he did land out of bounds. Third down now for Utah State. Two receivers to the far, one to the near. Calvin Tyler, the running back. Bonner rolling left, looking, looking, has a man. Intercepted, intercepted at the five at the goal line. Thrown behind Van Leeuwen and intercepted with four seconds left. Wow, they had an option play here. They had Calvin Tyler coming underneath for the little pitch to the inside, the shovel pass. Tried to get to the outside to Van Leeuwen. The ball may have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. It was Garrett yep. Beck. Oh my goodness, and Van Leeuwen wide open. Easy touchdown, and Weber State's going to get out of here without giving up any points. So and the backer, Garrett Beck, gets his hand on it, and that was Maxwell Anderson, who had two interceptions a week ago, gets his third of the season. All right, there you go. The knee is down in Utah State. Van Leeuwen wide open, but a tip at the line leads to an interception, and the Aggies unable to come away with any points. Ag Ruby's proud host of the Aggies Coaches Show. You gotta believe that maybe that bye week is coming at a good time. Yep, and you know, I think, look, I think there's a lot of things at play here. Number one, Weber State's good. Like, don't take anything away from Weber State. This is a really, really good football team. This is a team that's nationally ranked in the big, in the uh, out of the big sky in FCS ranks for a reason. Jay Hill's one of the best coaches in college football, regardless of FBS or FD FCS. I think Utah State's also struggling from a bit of a hangover and a little doubt of confidence after playing that Alabama game. And I also think they're looking ahead at a bye week and being able to kind of regroup and retool and uh, heal up a little bit. I think there's a lot of things at play here that lead you to a perfect storm with the Aggies being down 13 to seven. But uh, I don't know if I wanted to be a fly on the, uh, on the wall in that locker room, that's for sure. Well, I gotta believe that there's some fire being lit under these guys. Luckily, only down six with a full half to play. So no panic yet for this Aggie football squad. And you're seeing a lot of early games across the country. I mean, App State beats Texas A&M today. Marshall goes into South Bend and beats Notre Dame today. South Dakota a week ago gives Iowa all they want to handle. So, I mean, there's a lot of early games where people are starting to, you know, trying to figure out who they are, what they're going to become, especially teams that have to replace a lot of starters on offense. And Utah State still trying to figure out how to replace Devin Tompkins and Derek Wright and Brandon Bowling. Just not able to figure that part out. And with a, a not all the way healthy quarterback right now, Logan Bonner, just not hitting on all signals right now. All right, so here you go, Utah State. After Weber State won the toss and decided to defer, Utah State will kick off to the Wildcats. This opening drive by Weber State is going to be huge on the outlook of this game. Aggies get a three and out, get off the field, then we got ourselves a game. Weber State goes down and scores, then the Aggies are really going to be on their heels. And you're right, though. I think that Efren Bonda did a, a, a good job of, of making some adjustments in that second quarter. They gave up 163 yards in the first, only 111 in that second quarter. So here we go. Elliot Nimrod gets his foot underneath this one. Will be returnable, took, taken at the three yard line. Past the 10, past the 15, hit at the 20 yard line and knocked down at the 22. Still going forward. Nice positive yards, past the 25 to the 26. Weaver State has an element of toughness that you just don't see from a lot of teams. They do. They bring a level of physicality, really a reflection of their head coach. I mean, Jay Hill, all during the week, sounded very confident in his bunch that they could come in here and, and really compete, and they, that they have. He's got a good football squad, and they're going to be really strong in that Big Sky Conference this year. 
Ball is at the 26 yard line. The Wildcats moving right to left. Bronson Barron, six of 15, 147 yards. Did throw those two interceptions. Has the ball at his own 26 yard line. Weaver State in their all whites moving right to left. Hand off to Josh Davis and he's met at the line and Josh Davis will get nothing. Daniel Gresham among others getting in the mix. No gain on the play. During the week, you and I talked a little bit about it, and I thought that between MJ Tafisi and AJ Bonk, John, they needed to come up with 20 to 25 tackles against this Weber State running game. Well, in that first half, they had 13 between them, and MJ Tafisi, along with Daniel Greshik, were able to combine for a no gain on this one to start the possession. Three receivers split to the far side. Josh Davis shows up in pistol, and then shifts to the right of Bronson Barron, American Fort grad, waiting for the snap. Looking right, steps up, throws off the hands of his intended receiver, looking for Meacham, his tight end. Led him a bit too far, but still a catchable ball. Would have gained about two or three yards on the play, but now it's third and 10 coming up for Weaver State. We haven't talked about it a lot. Also in the first half, Utah State playing with that Ale Matuapuaka at that nose tackle position, and Kessie Bacauta also went out in that first half. So now you got Sandy Tuyaki and Tavian Coleman, but now with the third and long, Efren Bonner brings in the Prowler. By the way, Hayden Meacham. Wade Meacham's his brother in the place for Utah State. That was Hayden Meacham. Meacham. Here we go. Big third and ten for Weber State. Pressure to the outside. Throwing deep down the near side. And it will be intercepted by Utah State. There to make the catch. Hunter Reynolds reels it in. Third interception by the Aggie defense. Efren Bonner is fired up. Now getting in the face of that Aggie offensive line saying, let's go. Hunter Reynolds playing center field on that one. Just spied it, was able to settle underneath it and make the catch almost like a fair catch. And Barron now with his third interception. Hunter Reynolds, his second interception of the season. And that might have been his easiest interception of the season. He had one in the first half that uh, was broken up by A.J. Carter and Ty McPherson. This one, he just settled right underneath it and made the catch. All right, let's see if the Aggie offense can feed off of that. Two receivers in the near, one to the far. Van Leeuwen comes in motion. They fake the handoff. All day to throw. Now to the outside. Nearly tipped away and nearly intercepted Heckard. And Cobbs battling for the ball. And Heckard nearly came away with a pick. That young man is a good football player. Physical, tough, right in the face of Brian Cobbs, who came into the game with 10 catches for 141 yards. Only two catches in that first half. And Heckard's only 5'10", a buck 95, but he is tough. Four-man front. Aggies will run right into it. And about a one, two yard gain to the 39 yard line and setting up a third and long. And the Aggies have been in third and long all day and they are 0 for 9 today on third, third now. And, and teams, and you said it in the first half, teams are, are playing that six man box and just baiting Utah State to run it on second and long. And Utah State stays true to their discipline and their, their principles and they run it, but no, no real push for that Aggie offensive line. Here we go, big third down after the interception, Aggie offense. Fake the handoff, looking right, throwing right, caught by Buchanan, but he's still well three yards far short of the first down at the 45 yard line. It'll be fourth and two coming up for the Aggie offense. And here comes Steven Cottsonley back into the game. Balls at the 45, Aggies need to get to the 47 for a first down. Not sure you're ready to go for this one yet. So three and out for that Aggie offense after the INT for Hunter Reynolds. See if the Aggies try something. I think Weber State coming in late is going to need to burn a timeout, and they do. Weber State wasn't quite sure timeout. if Utah State was going to go Weber for State. it or not, so they the first time out of sat back and waited and said, are they timeout really the going to pump this thing away? It'll give Utah State a chance to think about it as well. We'll take a break. You're listening to Aggie football with the Aggies trailing Weber State 13 to 7. 13 minutes left in the third on the Aggie Sports Network All from right, Learfield. With unrivaled landscapes that provide a quality of life unlike any in the country, you'll find us immersed at the peak of nature's splendor through a gateway of opportunity which leads to academic and personal growth that is beyond compare. Our students learn at the peak of achievement. And as our more than 5,000 student athletes take the field of play with unequaled passion, you'll find us performing at the peak of competition. The Mountain West is at the peak.
Alumni Association for Aggie Adventures, outings, travel experiences, and away game tailgates. Visit usu.edu slash Aggie Adventures to find out about all the upcoming alumni events. In one of these uh, possessions, Blake Anderson's going to try to do something to infuse some enthusiasm in that offense. He's going to have to go for it on fourth down or do something. Right now is not the right time because your defense is starting to dial a few things up and starting to try to control this game. But at a certain point, you got to believe that the head coach for Utah State is going to try to do something to really instill some confidence in that Aggie offense. Oh. And Utah State jumps. So back it up five. False start coming up. Dead ball. False start. Number 16. Kicking team. Five yard penalty. Remain fourth down. This Weaver State defense, to a certain extent, is kind of bullying this Utah State offense. They are tough. Especially on the outside with Heckard and Anderson and Garrett. Need a good one from Cottsley here, and they get it. Driving Davis all the way back to the eight yard line, and he is hit hard and ripped down at about the 14-yard line in another late push. Oh, gets up, says, no, that was an accident. Didn't mean it. Davis goes, where's the penalty? Officials say, let it go. So first and 10 at the 14-yard line. By the way, that was not Davis. Hadley. That's, yeah. Hayes Hadley. Hayes Hadley. Excuse me. Yeah, six returns a week ago for 131 yards, including a 47-yarder. Ephraim Bonda now starting to fill this thing out just a little bit. And with Weber State backed up, a chance to perhaps flip, flip uh, flips and field position for Utah State. Bankston, the running back. Aggies bring a blitz. Barron looking to throw, dumps it down to his tight end, and a good open field tackle at the 15-yard line. Gervin Hall able to upend Justin Malone, and it gained one on the play when it could have been a whole lot more. Good open field tackle for Gervin Hall. The transfer out of Miami. A little fake to the left. Sprint to the right. Tried to hurdle Gervin Hall. Hall kept his head up and was able to make the sure tackle. Second and eight. A two-yard gain for Malone. It's his second catch of the game today. Bankston, the running back. Handoff. Bankston tries to get to the outside. Hall is there for another tackle. He takes the brunt end of that hit. Gain of three to the 20-yard line and third and we'll call it four coming up for Weber State. Bankston's not big. I mean, 5'11 at buck 95, but runs with that pad level in that forward lean. We saw him get a first down on a third and short in the first half with that forward lean. Wow. Aggie Hurt coming to life right now on a big third down opportunity. Pretty good crowd here at Maverick Stadium, especially from the student section. They want to see something big here. Jay Hill may have to call another timeout down with under five seconds on the play clock. Confusion there for Weber State. Aggies with that rover defense. Barron gets the snap, trying to dance around in the pocket and will be hit and will be near the first down marker. Yes, he gets it right to the 25 yard line. Barron just kind of weaving his way through the Aggie defense, is able to get five when he needed four. Good recognition, the Prowler defense, the rush lanes to the outside opened up that middle and Bronson Barron was able to get upfield for the first down. First first down for either team here in the second half. Weaver State leading 13 to seven, 11 minutes left in the third quarter. Barron now four carries for 19 yards. Aggies look a little bit confused defensively. Bankston shifts to the right. Aggies settle in. Hand off to Bankston, starts right, then gets left, and MJ Tafisi is able to rip him down at the 30-yard line, but not after a gain of six on the play. It'll be second and four coming up for Weber State. So they shift the running back to the right of Bronson Barron, and then they hand it to him as if they're going to run to the left, and then he breaks it back to the right, that cutback, which has hurt Utah State so far in this early season. Weber State showed pace, and then Barron puts his hand down and said, nope, let's look to the far sideline. Weber State's going to try to slow this game down. Part of the strategy to eliminate the number of possessions for Utah State. Aggie stacking the box, anticipating a throw, pitching to Bankston, and Bankston's hit at the 30-yard line. Loss of one on the play, another TFL for that Aggie defense, and it'll bring up a third and five for Weber State. And now all of a sudden we're calling MJ Tafisi and Gervin Hall's name quite a bit here in the second half. Just Balls a simple pitch play yep. to the left that time. Balls of the 30. Weaver State needs to get to their own 35 for a first down. 
9.45 left to go in the third quarter. Weber State leading 13 to seven. Barron only seven of 18 through the air so far. Bankston motions out of the backfield. Barron looking for the slant. He's got a man wide open at the 40, 45, and pushed down at the 50 yard line. A big gain of 20 on third and five to Sharp, and Weber State gets exactly what they needed on third and long. I think that might be Gervin Hall now down yep. on the knee. Aggies have been banged up a lot today as well. That slant route has been the best play through the air for Weber State. They've hit it probably three or four times. And on a third down, Utah State with the prowler, Jacob Sharp able to get the inside position and get the first down. Irvin Hall still taking a knee at midfield. Timeout on the field. That brings us to another timeout. This is Aggie football from Learfield. Go ahead. 9.30 left to go here in the third quarter. Weber State leading Utah State 13 to seven. And nothing beats the power and excitement of live events like Ticket Smarter for all the best sports, concerts, and theater events. Visit TicketSmarter.com or on the app, Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. Well, Weber State dialed up a big play on third and five. Wildcats now five of 12 on third down, including two on this drive alone. One on third and four, another one on third and five, and Weber State now has the ball at the 50-yard line, leading 13 to seven. One of my keys in this game was that third down conversions. Utah State 0 of 10 in this game on third down. Weber State winning that battle. And a lot of it is because Utah State's in third and long more often than not. Bankston the running back. Hand to Bankston, and Bankston hits hit at the line. Stretches for a yard to the 49-yard line, but that's it. Second and nine coming up with the Weber State Wildcats on the Aggie side of the field. And you're starting to see now that group of linebackers flash. Bonk, Pachon, Tafisi, Daniel Greshik in there. Starting to bottle up that little cutback or that little bounce to the outside. Weber State with now over 300 yards of offense. But Johnny Carter and Ty McPherson tied up on man coverage to the near side. Bronson Barron in pistol. Four man front for the Aggies. Bankston trying to get around the edge and he could not. Snowed under right at the line of scrimmage. Great job by that Utah State defense. And Juan Yu and others coming up in the mix. You know, this was a great play by Ike Larson. Coming from the safety position, they had the offset tied into the right. He was able to dip inside of the tight end's block and make the tackle right at the line of scrimmage. All right, Weber State's converted two third downs on this drive. It's third and nine. Motion man, and it's a quarterback draw right up the middle, and Barron's got the first down and more. Tackled from behind at the 32-yard line, down to the 31. He needed nine, he got 19, and Weber State at the Aggie 31-yard line. Beautiful play call by the Weber State offense. Design quarterback draw. Had everybody running wide and left the middle wide open. He just had to make Hunter Reynolds miss. He did. And he was able to get a field for the first down. Another third down conversion for this Weber State offense. Now two receivers on the near side. Three third down conversions on this drive alone. And another quarterback draw. Different quarterback in into the game. Number eight. Creighton and that's Cooper, Creighton yeah. Cooper. At Lehigh High School. I saw Bronson Barron kind of grab at that leg as he went down after making that big run. 
Now, Kylan Weiser is your primary backup, at least on the two deep, but Cooper stays in at quarterback. And, and Brunson Barron is still in too, so they've got something dialed up here, a little package here for Cooper with Brunson Barron now lined yep. up a wide receiver to the near side. Watch the double pass here. Cooper just ran a quarterback draw for three, years, uh, three yards to the 28-yard line. Running back shifts to the right. Cooper will run the quarterback draw again and gets out of one tackle, but can't get out, out of the grasp of Hunter Reynolds. Grabs two to the 26-yard line. It'll be third and five coming up. Interesting design. And Cooper stays at, nope, now he checks out. Design quarterback runs for Mickey Mantle, that offensive coordinator. But they've got to believe that they've been picking up the third down conversions on this drive. Another here we go. opportunity here. Third and five coming up for Weaver State. Wildcats moving right to left. And Juan Yu goes to the crowd, says, let's hear from you. Malone motions to the right side. Pistol formation. Inside handoff. Davis has the first down. Another third down conversion to the 19-yard line. That's four third down conversions on this drive that's ripping the heart out of the Aggie defense. Just a simple off tackle play. Had double tight ends, able to outflank the Aggies. Barron back quickly to line of scrimmage. Gives it to Davis again. Davis gets to the outside, gets the corner, gets a big block to the 10, and pushed out of bounds near first down. Mark. Oh, they'll say at the 11. Two yards shy of the first down, and it'll be second and two. A long, long drive now. 13 plays on this drive. Weber State has picked up four third down conversions. Low snap, hand to Davis. Davis, two yards behind the line, is knocked down back to the 14-yard line. So a TFL for the Aggie defense is now going to bring up a third and four, and is this the time the Aggie defense can get off the field? Chewing up all the time here in the third quarter. Trying to keep your players fresh. Tavian Coleman this time was able to slip the block and get to Josh Davis in the backfield, along with Patrick Joyner Jr. But we've seen the slant route. We've seen the quarterback draw. We've seen the quarterback run. We've seen the off tackle play for first down conversions for Weber State. Siona Moa coming into the game for Utah State. Here we go, third and four. Handoff. Breaks one tackle, breaks another, close to first down yardage. He's gonna get it. Five yard gain, or six yard gain when he needed five. Right up the middle, first down, Weber State. Five third down conversions on this drive. It's first and goal, Wildcats on the draw. Bankston broke the tackle, the line of scrimmage broke another tackle from Pat Joyner Jr. Oh, this Aggie defense They're is gassed. gassed. Holy smokes, this is big boy football here, folks and Weaver State is putting it on Utah State. Another quarterback draw by Cooper. Cooper's hit at the five, muscles to the four. Second and goal coming up. See a lot of grabbing, a lot of arm tackling. Yep. Utah State not attacking the running backs and the football. Five third down conversions. They had a chance to get a stop there. Bankston ran through it. Can the Aggies force a field goal? Right now, Weaver State's getting everything they want, especially on third down. It's second and goal from the five. Cooper stays in at running back. Will they let him run again? He does, trying to get to the outside, and he's muscled down all the way back to the nine-yard line. A loss of four on the play, so here we go, folks. It's third and goal from the nine, a loss of four on this play. But now it's third down. Five consecutive third down conversions. Now inside the 10, what do you do? You get that slant route on the outside. Can you get pressure in Brunson Barron's face? Can you make Weber State make it a mistake? Hunter Reynolds was able to come up and get Cooper for that TFL. The herd coming to life now. One receiver on each side. It's Sharp and McPherson. Bunch formation. Aggie stacking the line, looking for the fade to the outside for McPherson, caught touchdown. Weber State, six for six on third downs on that drive, scoring a touchdown on the fade route to McPherson, and the Wildcats lead by two touchdowns. Great coaching from Weber State. Utah State plays the inside technique to try to take away the, the inside slant route, so they throw the fake ball. Plenty of space out there to the left side, Beautiful into the throw. back of the end zone, and a t perfect throw from Bronson Barron to Ty McPherson. Weber State going for the extra point. 
A lot of coaches here like to chase the two-point conversion to try to make it a full two touchdowns. I like the fact Weaver State's not doing that. Oh, there'll be a direct snap. Well, they get the two points. There you go, it's a fake extra point. And Burgess picks it up and runs it in for two, and the Aggies stand around while he just waltzes into the end zone. The flag is down. Aggie defenders looking at each other. This might be a post-possession foul. And a lot of frustrated Aggies right now as Weber State held the ball for nine minutes and 29 seconds on that drive. 18 plays, six third down conversions, 86 yards, nine and a half minutes on that drive. Unbelievable. Field, a successful two point try. After the play, unsportlike conduct, number 62 of the kicking team. That 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That is 62's first unsportlike contact of the game. The holder, on the, field. the holder and the punter gets an unsportsmanlike conduct, which honestly, you know what? He doesn't get those opportunities very often. All right, there you go. 21-7 after the two-point conversion. 3-18 left to go in the third quarter. Weber State leading Utah State by two touchdowns. This is Aggie football from Learfield. Life's too short to spend all of our time indoors. And in today's day and age, it's important to think outside the box. Find your happy place, grab some friends, and let us help you get to where you really want to be. The Young Automotive Group. Think young, drive young. Eight, six for six on third down conversions on that drive. One of the more remarkable drives you will ever see. As you mentioned, what was it? 18 plays, 86 yards, took nine minutes off the clock and ends in a touchdown. Big boy football. Yep. Half of those were running the football with the quarterback draw and the quarterback scramble. A lot, yeah, a lot of times you see these, you know, FCS teams come up with wins and it's really kind of gimmicky with what they do. Nothing gimmicky about what Weber State is doing today. By the way, that, that uh, pigskin scoring summary is brought to you by your Utah Pork producers. For more information, visit pork.org. All right, after the, uh, this kick will be taken at the 10-yard line after the 15-yard markoff. Vaughn, who's got one kickoff return, can't even get past the 20, marked at the 18-yard line. Ran into a stone wall. This Aggie, okay, you hear players and coaches talk about this all the time, Kevin. It's called juice, all right? And you know what it is. It's, you know, momentum. It's excitement on the sideline. Right now, the body language on the Aggie sideline is not great. And if Utah State has a three and out here, this could be really ugly. They've only had three plays this entire half. Only one possession. And the time of possession, 29-10 to 12-32. Logan Bonner. Running back to his left. Aggies need a spark from somebody. Down by 14 with 3.13 left in the game. Inside handoff to Calvin Tyler. Tyler puts his head down. Good yardage on first down to the 24-yard line. That's a gain of six. Second and four. Aggies need pace. You need to hurry. You need to get something going. You gotta give yourself some, some momentum, like you said, some flow. Motion man. Is Vaughn, they fake the fly sweep. Middle of the field, intercepted, and this might go for a score. 15, 10, five, touchdown, Weber State. A pick six, Weber State sock coming the whole way. Desmond Williams reels in the pick, and Weber State's running away and hiding from Utah State. 2.43 left to go in the third quarter. It's 27-7, Wildcats. Logan Bonner never saw the safety. Desmond Williams, who spied him all the way through, trying to come on the dig route to Brian Cobbs over the middle. I'm sorry, that was to Brock Lane, the tight end that he was going to. He watched him the entire way. Williams spied it, jumped in front of it, took it back to the house. Logan Bonner now with his third interception of this game. 
And Weber State has come to play today, folks. Wow. Third interception thrown by Logan Bonner. And the extra point is up and good. And the Wildcats lead 28 to 7 with 243 left in the third. And really no answer right now for this Aggie offense. The Aggie faithful getting very restless here at Maverick. Down three scores now. You're actually seeing some pick up and say, you know what? Might be beating traffic right now. Great play by Desmond Williams. Despite Logan Bonner, who had Brock Lane coming across the middle, looked like he was breaking free, but Logan Bonner never saw Williams. Jumped right in front of Brock Lane and took it right back into the end zone. Weber State filling the juice. Well, now you have to ask yourself, could you see a change of quarterback? Wasn't going to say it, but Logan Bonner, 7 of 22, three interceptions, and only 68 yards in this game. And you may need that. You may need a spark, some sort of change to get you moving. This Weber State football team is legit. More well, physical. Have outplayed Utah State at the line of scrimmage. And you have to say, their game plan has outdone Utah State thus far in this ballgame. Yep, yep, absolutely. Here comes your kickoff. This is going to be a short high kick that Vaughn takes at the two-yard line. Past the 10 to the 15 and, uh, well, can't get to the 15. Finally is able to push forward to about the 16-yard line. After a kickoff return, the Aggies have gone since the fourth quarter of the UConn game when they needed to go the length of the field and scored a touchdown against UConn to put that game away. That's the last time this Aggie offense has scored a point. No points against Alabama. That's somewhat understandable. Getting shut out offensively by Weber State, that's a different thing. These Aggie faithfuls not happy that perhaps there is not a change. Two receivers on each side for Bonner. Tyler to his right. Weber State stacking the line. Five men in the box. Aggies will run the draw, and Tyler gets nothing. Wow. Boobirds are out. Yep. Don't like Utah State not able to get more than a yard on first down. Aggies going pace right back to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers to the far, one to the near. And at a certain point, you just maybe let your quarterback go. Don't look yeah. at the line, at the, co the coaching staff. Just go. Yep, I agree with that. Fake the handoff. Bonner wants to throw. Looking left the whole way. Caught. And pushing forward to first down is McGriff. So a gain of 11 when the Aggies needed 10 with 2.03 left to go in the game. Long. Or the third quarter. Long throw from the right hash all the way across the field to Justin McGriff, who gets his second catch of the game. Now receivers on each side for Bonner. Fake the sweep, running the quarterback, or running the wide receiver screen, gets past the 30 to the 35 to the 40, and past the 40 to about the 43 yard line. Aggies needed that one, Terrell Vaughn on the wide receiver screen, gets to the 43 yard line. Nice gain on the play, and another Aggie first down. So back to back first downs now, run pace, get going. Hand off to Tyler. Tyler gets past the 45 yard line to about the 47, a gain of five on the play. And the Aggies need to get right back to the line of scrimmage with 124 left to go in the third quarter. And a Weber State defender takes a knee here <laughs> as Utah State is starting to feel a little bit of juice on this drive. That's when the pace works, is when you get a first down and you get up and you push forward with that running game. That's what I like to see. I think they're gonna have to throw it a little bit more on first down right now to keep the chains moving. Yep. <laughs> so Goldman pops up, runs to the far sideline. That's what they're coached to do. Yep. When it's not a bad Utah idea. State gets the pace moving, they've been coached to take the leg, take the knee, stop the flow, allow yourselves to get regrouped. But right now, Utah State with back to back first downs, a pitch out to Justin McGriff and a little inside bubble screen to Terrell Vaughn. Tyler to the left of Logan Bonner. And it'll be another handoff to Tyler. Tyler bounces the outside. He gets past the 45 yard line and that'll be enough for a first down with 110 left to go in the third quarter. And the Aggies get right back to the line of scrimmage. Cali 
Tyler now with 17 carries and 54 yards. A little bit more space on this drive. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near. Aggies need to score and score quickly. Hand up to Tyler, they'll run the double pass. Here comes Cobbs. Cobbs steps out and breaks one tackle, breaks another and gets to the 42 yard line. Cobbs wanted to throw that ball the whole time. Nobody was open, has to keep it himself and gets to the 42, gain of three on the play. The reverse pass, the lefty Cobbs had Justin McGriff running to the post and he had Terrell Vaughn running to the, to the boundary. Decided to pull it, tuck it instead. Probably a good move. Handoff once again to Tyler. Tyler can't do anything with it. Tyler gets to the 40. Gain of two on the play. Aggies committed to that inside draw. Third and five coming up. And now you're in four down territory now. Yeah. Everything's four down territory the rest of this game now. Try to get one more playoff before the quarter break. Bonner looking to the outside. Caught by McGriff. Flag is thrown. It's going to be a P.I. McGriff's right at the first down marker. They're going to give it to him, but I believe we're also going to have a uh, pass interference against Weaver State. Wow. Great coverage again by Camden Garrett. He got there a little early, and McGriff was able to make a, a contested catch for the first down. Dangerous throw again from Bonner. So let's see what the flag is. I anticipate you're going to get a pass interference. or a hold. They are playing awfully physical with these Aggie wide receivers. Either way, it's going to be a first down for Utah State, whether they keep the flag or not. Jay Hill brings his team to the midfield Soldier and there's... The play is a completed catch for a first down. But during the play, holding number zero defense. That penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. So the holding will be added on. Weber State well, brings well, their team well. out on the field at the 50-yard line to celebrate and jump up and down and essentially tell Utah, Utah State fans and Utah State team, hey, this is our field today, and they've earned the right to do it. And does Utah State get an untimed down here because that penalty is the last play of the quarter? Oh, I believe you're right. So they're, they're going to add the penalty yardage at the end of the play, and you're right. That is right in the face of the herd and the Aggie faithful right now. And I think they'll get one untimed play right now to end the third quarter. Now the Markoff will take the ball to the 30-yard line. So the Aggies will have a untimed down at the 30 on the near hash. So you have one play. There you go. So you have one play to try to count, get points in the third quarter. And you've not really taken a shot yet. You haven't proven that you can get off the line of scrimmage, but is now a chance with an untimed down to maybe fake that zone read and take a deep shot. All right, All right Logan Bonner, Makakona's the running back. Two receivers to the far, one to the near. Logan Bonner, let's see if the Aggies try to stretch things out. Weber State brings blitz. Bonner's got to get rid of it. Spins out of a tackle. There's going to be a holding call. Bonner waiting, waiting, dumping down. Caught and oh, dropped. Well, it would have been a touchdown. Davis drops it at the five-yard line. Probably, though, it's good that he dropped it because it would have come back with a holding call. It's actually Vaughn who dropped it at the five-yard line. Another drop, but hold it. three Number flags. Offense. 10 yards from the previous spot, replay, first down. So that brings us to the end of the third quarter. We're going to do another untimed down. Oh, no, down. another untimed down. Yeah, right. you're right. So the play's dead. First and 20, but again, just snake bit. They did have a shot play that time. Yep. They wanted to go down the near side to Brian, uh, Brian Cobbs. A lot of pressure in the face of Logan Bonner. Showed some good speed to get outside there. Showed some good mobility there for sure. And that may be a sign for the future for him to buy a little bit of time, move out to his left, get his hip set and make a, a strong throw to Terrell Vaughn. Makakona at running back, three receivers to the far side. One man to the near. And here comes Logan Bonner. Last play of the third quarter. 
Fake the handoff again. Bonner's got time to throw. Middle of the field, caught at the 25-yard line. McGriff stretches all the way down to the 23-yard line. It'll be second and three when we come back after the 17-yard catch. Utah State's going to need some magic to go their way here in the fourth quarter, trailing Weber State 28-7. You're listening to Aggie Football from Learfield. You can have live college sports in your hand this year with the brand new Varsity Network app. Hear live, play by play, and keep up with your favorite teams and audio broadcasts no matter where you are with this free new app. Be sure to download the Varsity Network app today. This March, you can listen to exclusive Westwood One coverage of the NCAA men's and women's basketball tournaments for free on the Varsity app. Powered by Learfield. Listen to every game at a truly unique listening experience. It's all free. Search NCAA Championships. Weber State 28-7. That's right. Weber State leading Utah State 28-7 as we start the fourth quarter of play. Let's take a look around the league. Brought to you by Monson Vision. Your best is closer than you think. Now looking across the rest of the league. Incarnate Word leading Nevada 48-41. Nevada also struggling with a team from the FCS ranks. San Jose State, how about this? Leading Auburn at the half 10-7. Brian Harson. Getting some uh, struggles from an old Mountain West opponent. Michigan leading Hawaii 14-0 in the first quarter. San Diego State up on Idaho State 21-7. Uh, earlier today, Air Force hammers Colorado 41-10. Cal over UNLV 20-14. Rebels hung in that game. Wyoming knocks off Northern Colorado out of the big sky. And Middle Tennessee knocks off Colorado State 34-19. That was 24-0 in the break. A little bit of a rocky start for the conference overall, including this Aggie squad right now, down three scores to start the fourth quarter. Uh, I thought that last couple of plays from Logan Bonner, perhaps his best of the game, though. Here we go. Scramble to the left, and then that big throw to Gr McGriff. Bonner hands off to Makakone, who's got a hole past the 20, and upended at the 15-yard line. A first down for Makakone and the Aggies inside the America First Blue Zone. For only the second time, remember at the end of the first half, in that second quarter, Utah State had a chance to take the lead, but had the interception. Maggie's with a four, or Weber State, four-man front. Give it to Makakona again. Makakona has wrestled down right at the 14-yard line. And now everything's got to be up-tempo. Yep. Everything's got to be moving at a high speed. You've got to get three scores back in this quarter. Makakona to the right of Bonner. Two receivers to the near, one to the far. Taking a long time. Yep. Bonner waiting for the snap, claps his hands, and they give it to Makakona again. Makakona breaks one tackle, can't get through the second. We'll get to the nine yard line, but folks, we got a flag and we probably have a holding call. Holding, number 87, offense. 10 yard penalty from previous block. Repay, second down. So instead of second and eight, you have a second and 18. It would have been a, had that running play counted, would have been about a third and three at the nine. We get Brock Lane with this one. Had Chandler Dolphin earlier. The Aggies able to overcome it, get the first down. 14 minutes left in the game. Aggies down 28 7. Still have not converted on a third down in this game. 0 of 10, they just surpassed the 200 yard mark. Bonner looks left, two receivers of the far, one to the near. Makakona the running back. And they're gonna hand to Makakona, and Makakona gets nothing. Again, you gotta help me with this one, Kevin. I don't, I don't quite understand this. Gain of maybe one on the play to the 23. Yeah, you're not alone. I think the Aggie faithful have seen I, it over and over and over again on second and 18 with under three and a half, down three and touchdowns. And down three scores. 
I mean, again, I know that they've got the, the six man box, but Utah State has not proven that they can beat the box. Yeah. All right, here we go. Third and uh, 17 for Utah State. Bonner looks right, throws right, and off the hands of Van Leeuwen. Van Leeuwen can't bring it in. And now it's going to be fourth and 17, and the Aggies have to go for it. Yeah, I mean, you're compelled now. You know, at the behest of your head coach, you've got to try to push it into the end zone. Utah State, 0 of 11 on third down conversions. And now you're asking a lot on third and 18 to try to push it inside the five to get a first down. Yep. All right, Utah State, this, I don't know if I'm out on a limb saying this might be the ball game here if Utah State wants any hope of trying to come back in this game. Bonner in shotgun, only a three-man rush. Bonner steps up, throwing middle of the field, incomplete. Throwing into double coverage, knocking it down, among others. Number zero, the man who's got himself a couple of interceptions, Desmond Williams, knocks it down. Utah State, no points on that drive. Timeout on the field. Timeout on the field. We'll take it. Weber State's looking to shock Cash Valley, leading 28-7. 13-02 left in the game. You're listening to Aggie Football from Learfield. With 12 institutions nestled in the nation's most desirable destinations, you'll see us enjoying life at the peak of celebration. As you witness us not only win, but win the right way, you'll find us competing at the peak of integrity. As our more than 5,000 student athletes take the field of play with unequaled passion, you'll find us performing at the peak of competition. The Mountain West is at the peak. All right, Weber State coming off one of the more impressive drives of the season that we've seen, frankly, from any team in a long time on that nine play drive. Up by seven, pushed it to a 14 point lead, then got a pick six and pushed it to 28 seven. And Utah State got all the way down. Would have had a third and three at the nine, but a holding penalty pushed it back, second and 18 after a direct handoff. And, and then an incomplete, two straight incompletes. The Aggies give it back to the Wildcats, who are now looking to park this car in the driveway. Mistake after mistake after mistake for this Aggie football team, especially on offense, just unable to consistently get anything going. Logan Bonner now 10 of 27 for only 112 yards and three interceptions in this game. Bronson Barron hands off to the outside. Bankston's got two to about the 25 yard line. Second and eight coming up for the Wildcats. Coach Anderson told us before the game that had to avoid the turnovers when they had three of them. Now they've got three of their own, but hard to overcome. A lot, a lot of mistakes here for this Aggie football team. Weber State now pushing 362 yards of total offense to Utah State's 205. The big number tonight, Weber State 9 of 16 on third downs, but six of those coming on the touchdown drive that gave Weber State at that point a two touchdown lead, which is just frankly unheard of. And on the other side, 0 11 for Utah State on third downs. Hand off to Bankston, gets two to about the 27 yard line. They'll be third and about a long five for the Wildcats. Right where they like to live. Yeah. In the second half, we've seen quarterback draw, we've seen off tackle, we've seen quarterback scramble, and we've seen the throw on the third down fade ball to Ty McPherson for the touchdown. So you've got to believe that this is the last ditch effort for the Zaki defense to keep them in this game. Cooper back in at quarterback. They've been running the quarterback draw with him a lot. Let's see if they do it again. Trying to run to the outside, snowed under, no gain on the play. In fact, a loss of one on the play. The handoff going to Chris Jackson, the running back, had two touchdowns last week against Western Oregon. But now Utah State able to finally get a third down stop. 
very conservative and interesting that they brought in Cooper. So Utah State keyed on the run, looked for the quarterback draw or the read, and was able to bottle up Chris Jackson. But Weber State bleeding a lot of clock here. Here comes Utah State with Cooper Jones. It's a nice punt, has to back up to his own 24 yard line. Breaks one tackle, gets past the 30 to the 35 to the 40 yard line. Good return by Cooper Jones and Utah State will have the ball at their own 40. All right, so if you're Anthony Tucker right now, forget about the run game. You gotta start pushing the ball down the field with 10 minutes, 42 seconds to go. Get to the line of scrimmage, let your quarterback call the two minute drill. He's smart enough, he's been in the system long enough, let him run the plays and let him go. Because you've got to get three scores on the board here before the end of this game to make it, you know, have a chance. Ball marked at the 40 yard line. The officials called a timeout to talk about something. Got an injured Aggie down here. Oh, I wow, might, I didn't see that. Might oh, be man. Ike Larson who got blocked on the play. Timeout on the field. I did not see that. He got really tagged by the up back. I think that was Meacham. Timeout on the field, we'll take it. Utah State trailing Weber State 28 to 7. 10.42 left to go in the game. This is Aggie football from Learfield. Honor spins out of pressure. End zone. Utah State trailing 28-7, 10.42 left to go in the game. And remember, the next Aggie Coaches Show will not be this Monday. It'll be a week from Monday, located at Ruby's Pizzeria, Pizza, Ruby's Pizzeria and Grill. There we go, located down the street from Maverick Stadium. Do you agree? they got to just let Logan uh, Bonner that's, now? That's what I would do. Let him get in the two-minute yeah. drill. Right now, Logan all by himself in the backfield with three receivers to the far, two to the near. He's only 10 of 27 in this game for 112 yards. But if you can get a little rhythm going here, five wide receivers now in the, in the formation. Bonner all by himself. Nobody in the backfield. Three-man front for Weber State. They understand it's going to be a passing situation. Bonner steps into the throw. Caught, but pushed out of bounds at about a 42-yard line. Only a gain of about three on the play. It's a long pass play for not a lot of yards to Vaughn. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're letting Logan Bonner now call those plays, get in the two minute drill. Fake the inside handoff. Bonner throwing the slant. Van Lewis skies up and brings it down, but not two yards shy of a first down at the 48 yard line. Aggies need to get to midfield for a first. Clock continuing to run. 10 11 left to go in the game. Van Lewis comes up hobbled just a little bit. Made a great catch. He's got to come out of the ball game. And it'll be Davis that will come in for him. Right now, Aggies just need to get the first down. That's your number one priority. They might run it here, although Weber State stacking the line. But Bonner will throw. Looking right, throwing right, and way over the head of his intended receiver, Vaughn. It'll be fourth and two coming up. Vaughn looked like he had a step, and Bonner just led him too far. The out cut got in front of Cal uh, Colvin. Just a, a wide throw from Bonner. Fourth down, and the Aggies now 0 of 12 on third down. One of my keys to this game, third down conversions, the simple plays, Utah State has been unable to make them. There we go, fourth and two. Bonner rolls right. 
is pressured, finally dumps it down. Vaughn's there to catch it, but in a couple of flags are thrown, and this might go against Utah yep. State. Yep, offensive PI. This might play. be, yeah, might be offensive PI. Yep. Which is a 15-yarder, and Utah State will have fourth and 17. So you had Cobbs that was scraping down. You had Vaughn, the inside receiver, working to the outside, a, a sprint out right. Pass interference, number eight, offense, blocking downfield. 15 yards from the previous spot, replay, fourth down. Woo. All right, folks, fourth and two just became fourth and 17. Shot themselves in the foot in every possible way tonight. Yeah, yep. I mean, take nothing away from Weber State. They have earned everything tonight. Utah State has not helped their cause at all. Now 10 penalties for 98 yards after 11 penalties a week ago. Not a lot you have in your playbook for fourth and 17, down by 21. Stack receivers on each side. And here comes Logan Bonner. Logan stepping, stepping, throwing, far sideline and incomplete as Davis can't bring it in. Would have been about two yards shy of the first down, but Davis catchable ball, just couldn't bring it in and hit from behind and Utah State turns it over on downs. Another high throw, had a chance to snag it and bring it down, but asking a lot on fourth and 17 to make that completion. So Weber State will have the ball at the Utah State 34 yard line, leading this game 28-7, 9-14 left to go in the game. Interesting how physical this Weber State football team is. Yep. A lot of banged up Aggies all game long. Weber State has been the tougher, more physical team. Uh, no way to combat that. That's a, extremely accurate. They've come in and been far and away the more physical team. Davis takes the inside handoff. He's hit at the line and pushed down. No gain on the play at the 34 yard line. Josh Davis. And again, just a hometown kid, Alta High School, 15 carries, 80 yards, 5.3 yards per carry. And he has been just a tremendous player for Weber State. And you hope for Weber State he can stay healthy. He's really been banged up the last couple of years. If he can stay healthy, Bronson Barron stays healthy, this is a really good Weber State team. And DeMond Bankston, the backup for Davis, has been good. Yes. 17 carries for 53 yards. So that one-two tandem, very sol solid for Weber State. Flag on the play. I believe this will go against Weber State on a false start. 8.37 though. Weber State's not worried about points here. They just want to run clock. Snap infraction, number 66, offense. Five yard penalty, remain second down. Coaches told us all week that if Utah State did not play well, Weber State was more than capable of putting it on the Aggies. And sometimes you hear that from coaches going into a game like that. Sometimes you just kind of roll your eyes and say, sure, coach. But these coaches truly believed it. Throwing the flare to the outside, caught by Malone, gets the penalty yards back, plus about one, and another injured Aggie player on the far side of the field. Michael Anyanwu had to go low against the big tight end, Justin Malone. He's 6'4", 240. Michael Anyanwu's out there, 5'7", 170, 5'9", 170. He took the worst of it. 8-13, it'll be third and nine when we are able to resume play. How many times have we had players down for Utah State tonight? Yeah. And it's a sign of a very tough physical football team that's come into play. A lot of variety on offense with the quarterback run, the slip out to the tight ends, Malone Timeout now on the field. with his third catch. And Bronson Barron, now 10 of 21, has not had to throw much here in the second half as Weber State has done a nice job on the ground. 186 yards now on 49 carries. Timeout on the field. We'll take it. You're listening to Aggie Football. Utah State trailing 28-7 to Weber State. 8.13 left on the clock on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield.
College sports fans now have access to hundreds of weekly podcasts that zero in on the college sports world. Now available in the Varsity Podcast Network and part of the new Varsity app. The app is free. Download from the App Store and listen today. is the score. Weaver State, eight and a half minutes away from walking out of here with a shocking but very convincing, very hard-earned and well-deserved victory. That's been the difference tonight. The third down conversions for Weaver State, the inability on third down for Utah State. Aggies only points in this game came on a 100-yard kickoff return by Terrell Vaughn. Aggies have not scored an offensive point in this game. Handoff to Davis, trying to bounce around the outside. He's got 30, 25, 20, and wrestled down at the 19-yard line. That's another third down conversion for Weaver State, who's now converted seven out of the last eight third downs in this game. Blake Anderson asking and pleading a holding, holding call yeah. on Byron Vaughn's as Josh Davis pressed the line of scrimmage, got outside of Vaughn's, who was locked up by big number 74 out there. That's George Barrera. But Davis was able to skirt to the outside and pick up the first. And uh, Coach Anderson may have had a beef on that one, looking at the replay. Bronson Barron. Hands off to Davis. Davis gets past the 20 to the 18 yard line. Second and eight, straight ahead. And Jay Hill all week was very confident in his comments to the press. I think he knows he's got a really good football team that's gonna be a big out in the big, big sky. They're gonna be tough to beat. Yeah. And Jay Hill, He's looking very confident over there on the sideline. Loves the way his team has played here tonight. Well, there's not, there's nothing to hate on if you're Weber State. They have just been outstanding. And again, for some FCS teams, when they pull these wins, sometimes it's with a little tricks and gadgets. Nothing about what they've done tonight. Looking to the outside. Caught, yes, did he get a foot in? He did. Flag on the play, but McPherson may have just reeled in his second score of the night. I think he's going to get flagged with the push off. I think you're going to get an offensive yeah, PI? Yeah, I think he pushed off on A.J. Carter right at the very end and then went and snagged it. And Bronson Barron's telling the offense to come back out to the middle of the field. We'll get the call here. McPherson did extend that arm. Yeah, I think they're going to get him with it. Another great throw from Bronson Barron. Throws a beautiful fade ball. We saw that in the first half to McPherson and then in the third quarter on the fade route for the touchdown. But this one he was pushing off with that left hand to get some separation. How would you like to be able to listen to us while synced up to your TV in the comfort of your own home? Simple. Go to SyncMyGame.com to find out how. Long conversation though. Rural Field is a touchdown. Pass interference. Number 23, defense. That what? penalty is to call. Wow, really? P.I. went against the defense. So there you go, McPherson picks up his second touchdown of the night. They called Who's it. Who's 23? Called it on Kaleo Neves. Uh, that certainly McPherson got the hand up and pushed off on A.J. Carter. Nothing going right for Utah State tonight. Yep. Well, that just about did it. It was already parked in the driveway. Now Weaver State just may have just shut off the ignition. 35 to 7. Extra point up and good. 6.42 left in the game. You know, we talked with the Coach Bonda and Coach Tucker earlier in the week. And that definitely was a push off for McPherson. I didn't see the inside to see. They called Nevis with the pass interference. But the, the coordinators told us that they did not practice real well this week. And it is certainly led to not playing well tonight. Some of that, maybe a little bit of a 
a hangover effect from Alabama last week. Was that, by the way, was that third down? Or was it second? I think it was second down. Okay. I think it was, otherwise, it might have been another third down conversion. Yeah. But certainly, Utah State is, was not ready to play tonight. And Weber State absolutely was. They'll go down I-15 and 89 tonight. Feeling very good about their football season and their football team. I didn't expect a blowout. No, 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 no. We expected a good game. We didn't expect a blowout, frankly, on either way. Certainly on the Weber State side. High kick should be uh, returnable by Vaughn. Takes it at the five to the 10 to the 15. Bounces around the outside and will push to about the 19. They'll mark him just shy of the 20 yard line. And then Aggie down. Maybe Ike Larson again. Hobbling to the sideline. So I, I think now you got to give Cooper Lagarde a chance to play. Got in a little bit last week against Alabama. Likely will finish Logan Bonner's night. That brings the Aggie faithful to their feet, which, you know, Logan Bonner is clearly not right all the way, but you can't put all this on Logan Bonner tonight. He finishes the night 12 of 31 for 120 yards, three interceptions. Cooper Lega fakes the handoff. He's going to get hit, wrestled down as the Aggies give up the sack. Cooper Lagarde didn't see the pressure coming from the outside and coming up with the sack. Weaver State with Braden Wilson able to collapse the pocket and rip down Cooper Lagarde. Loss of eight on the play. But right around Cole Motes. Cooper Lagarde, no chance. It'll be interesting to hear Blake Anderson after this game what his thoughts are. Cooper Lagarde in shotgun. Two receivers on each side. Lagasse's a three-man front, looking deep to the outside. It's going to be a jump ball, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Heckert all the way down to the Weaver State 40-yard line. That's the fourth turnover and the fourth interception. Heckert is not a guy you want to challenge on those 50-50 balls, and he's able to reel it in for the, for the interception. I think you mentioned to me a uh, great play by him. You mentioned to me that Coach Hill wanted him on the your 60 for 60 in your he was. Salt Lake show. He was upset that he wasn't higher. I think he finished 58, 57 uh, he, in our 60 and 60. He's locked up every receiver he's got against tonight for Utah State. Comes up with the interception here. The fourth turnover for Utah State. Lagan, his first attempt, gets picked by Heckard. He saw Desmond Williams take one back to the house on interception. And then the biggest play of the game, perhaps, right as Utah State was going in to try to score to take the lead at the end of the second yeah. quarter. Yep. The tip pass that was intercepted by Maxwell Anderson, perhaps the biggest play of this game. Really was, too. Utah State completes that pass. They're up 14 to 7. By the way, a flag. Two guys can't not go in motion at the same time for Weber State. So back it up five. But you're right, you go back, it's 13 to seven, Utah State with just five seconds left in the uh, in the half. Logan Bonner rolls Five out, four, has Van Leeuwen wide four, open. The ball's seven, tipped four, to the line, four, intercepted, and Utah Five, State two, three, doesn't come nine, away with any down. points. And uh, yeah, here you are. And then in the third quarter, Weber State goes on an 18 play drive, picking up six third down conversions. Took nine and a half minutes off the clock. That was really the end, I, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. Bronson Barron, hands off. No gain on the play. Bankston wrestled down. 540 and counting left to go as the Aggies trail 35 to seven. And unless, and again, we're kind of hitting this over and over, but I think it's important based on what we saw last year with this Utah State offense, the Aggies are very much in danger of going two full games. Now, Alabama's one thing, Weber State's another, two full games without scoring an offensive point. Still have yet to find out who they are on offense and showing how much they miss Devin Tompkins, Brandon Bowling, and Derek Wright have not been able to find the combination yet. And certainly a quarterback that's not all the way healthy. Inside handoff, no gain on the play, maybe a yard to Bankston. Third and 14 coming up, and it's Jay Hill. 
content just to run clock and uh, get out of here with the W. A much deserved W. Cannot talk or sing enough praises for what Weber State's done today. Yep. Been better, bigger, <laughs> well, not bigger, but tougher for sure. Utah State been outplayed, out game planned, out executed. They've been the better team tonight. Yep. Third and 15 coming up. Official no gain on that play. Let's see if Barron tries to air it out here or if they're content just to run it. They will run it. And Bankston gets nothing. So no gain on that play. And Weber State will punt it back to Utah State. And we'll see Cooper Lega once again. Coach Anderson will take a timeout here with 4.15 to go. Out. Utah State. If nothing else, save some time and let Cooper Lega get some reps, get some opportunities. Weber State just went over the 400 yard mark. Look, As Utah State's first time out of the half. 402 to 206, almost a 200 yard differential. And going for a buck 36 against Alabama is one thing, but going for 206 tonight against this Weber State team, maybe that defense is going to be the best in the FCS. We'll watch that throughout the course of the season. They're awfully good, awfully tough. And those corners and safeties are outstanding. Yeah. All right, so Weber State will punt it away. As uh, the punter who's had himself a nice night tonight, Jack Burgess, set to punt this thing away. Jack not only has punted the ball well tonight, he also got himself a two-point conversion on a fake extra point attempt, and it also drew himself an unsportsmanlike conduct. Kind of spiked the ball, which, it. frankly, a little bit of pressure. It's able to get away. Nice, high, driving kick. Taken at the 12-yard line, fumbled, and finally recovered by Utah State. Muff kick, but able to recover it at the 13-yard line. So the Wildcat defense, which has bullied Utah State for uh, much of the night tonight, comes back out on the field. First time this season, if you, this holds, that Utah State will lose the turnover battle. Aggies have forced three interceptions, but have thrown four of their own. And again in the third quarter, we talked about the start of the game, didn't start well in the first quarter, and then the third quarter outscored 14 to nothing. Now outscored 28-0 on the season in the third quarter. By the way, Michael Onyamu hobbles to the sideline again. Tough physical battle for Utah State tonight. Laga looking left, caught by Vaughn, and Vaughn has wrestled down at the 20 yard line, a gain of seven on the play. And this wide receiver core, I think a lot of people will talk about quarterback play, but the wide receiver core needs to do a better job. There's been some drops out there, tipped balls that led to interceptions. Been a couple of drops early that hurt Utah State. Laga. Looking up the middle of the field, he'll get the first down to the 25 and hit as he tries to slide to the 27 yard line. Moves the chains, first and 10 coming up, 334 left. Thank you, Faithful One, a helmet to helmet there on Garrett Beck. Have not gotten a lot of breaks either tonight. Yeah. Briggs in a running back, Laga motions left, then rolls right. He's going to keep it again to the 30, to the 35, and hit hard at about the 36 yard line. That's a gain of nine by Lega. Does bring that element. He Both does. He and Levi Williams. I mean, Cooper Lega was a, just an absolute specimen at Orem High School, both running and throwing the football. Four man front for Utah State, hand off to Briggs. Briggs, who's looked really good in the UConn game, has not had a lot of opportunities in the Alabama game and only had one series in the first half. This is his second series in the game, gets four yards in the first down. Runs hard when he gets his opportunity. Yep. 10 carries for 85 yards in that UConn game. Lega stepping into a long throw. He's got a man open and incomplete. Tipped away at the last second. Intended for a receiver they really like in Jalen Royals. And I'm not sure if it was tipped away or if Royals dropped it. I need to see a replay. It, on that it was tipped at the last minute. Just a little bit underthrown. They love Royals' speed, by the way. They think he's going to be a special player before it's all said and done. Was it Georgia military? They went yep. to see him. Uh, he came here, came to Logan for a camp. Oh, and he, and he ran the... The infamous 4-2, 4-3, 40. Yeah. 
a blue right by the defender right there, but a little bit underthrown from Cooper Lega. Lega play fake, tipped at the line and nearly intercepted. It'll bring up a third and ten coming up for Utah State as the Aggies will look for their first third down conversion of the night. They are 0 of 12 on third down. Big number 60, Kafusi Pakofe, who knocked that ball down. The, the bye's going to come at a good time for Utah State. They've got a lot of regrouping they've got to do as they enter into the conference schedule against UNLV in two weeks. 234 left in the ball game. Utah State trailing 35-7 to Weber State. Four-man front. Now Weber State shows blitz. Lega looks left, then shovels it to Briggs. Briggs is going to get the first down to the 44-yard line. Gain of 13 on that flip pass that we saw out of the backfield against UConn a couple times. And the Aggies convert a third down for the first time tonight. One of 13. Weber State, who a week ago gave up only two of 14. Boy, they're off to a start on third down efficiency on defense. Make it to Briggs. Lega looking middle of the field. Caught. Nope. Royals drops it. Jalen Royals looking for his first catch in an Aggie uniform. Had it right in his right in his chest and couldn't bring it in. That's one of many drops the Utah State receivers have been guilty of tonight. Great throw from Cooper Lega. Stepped right into it. Little dig route. Jalen Royals kind of looking up before he secured the football. Two receivers on each side. Lega fakes it to Briggs, throwing, caught, and stretching forward is Van Leeuwen. He'll be about a yard, no, about two yards shy of first down. They'll mark him at the 36-yard line. Two minutes exactly left to go in the game as Lega trying to get some points on the board here for Utah State. Lega gives it to Briggs. Briggs breaks out from the open field to the 15, to the 20, down to the 19-yard line. Briggs is making a case for extended playing time. Aggies inside the America First Blue Zone. A lot of fans are saying, where's this been? But you got second, third team kids out there for Weber State now, too, as well. Two receivers on each side for Utah State. Trailing Weber State. They're going to drop this game to the Wildcats for the first time since 1978. Lega stepping around, dancing around in the pocket. Finally flips it over to the right side. Caught. And ripped down at the 15-yard line. Nope, still pushing to the 13. Good job by, I believe, that is Xavier Williams, the Alabama transfer, picking up the reception, a gain of uh, six on the play. I think that's his second catch of the season. Under a minute, 58 seconds left. Aggies trying to put some points on the board here. Not a lot of urgency there as Cooper Lega looks to the sideline. Claps his hands. Lega straight drop back. Has some pressure. And will be brought down at the 15-yard line. A loss of one on the play. And the Aggies will call timeout with 35 seconds left. Good job. Timeout, and Utah State. Their second timeout call. Jack Kelly, redshirt freshman from Kearns High School, coming around the edge and bringing down Lega for the one-yard loss. Third and five coming up. Really impressed with Weber State, Scotty, have to say. I mean, they uh, came in with a great plan. They executed it well. They possessed the football 35 48 to 2007. 402 yards of total offense, 10 of 19 on third downs. They, they just executed at a very high level. If it weren't for the, the three turnovers, the interceptions by Bronson Barron might have even been a little bit worse. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So a lot of just, uh, as you like to say, lipstick on a pig here at the end of this game. This is, uh, these next two weeks, there are going to be a lot of soul searching. UNLV's coming into town. UNLV gave Cal a heck of a game earlier today. Two receivers on each side. Cooper Lega in shotgun. Breaks to his left. Looks back to the near sideline. Lega claps his hands, pressure, throws the outside, looking for a man and overshoots him. Van Leeuwen's able to reel it in, but about two yards out of the back line of the end zone. 
That was third down and six. Now here's fourth and six. Throw that ball a little sooner, you got yourself a touchdown. Another third down miss. But that's one that's got to be thrown to the pylon. And Cooper Legat threw it a little bit more to the end line. Leg uh, Van Leeuwen has some space out there. If he had thrown it to the pylon, I think Van Leeuwen could have got there from that inside fade route. All right, here we go. Motion man to the outside, moving along the line. And again, Utah State's going to get hit with a false start. Kind of indicative on what this night's been like. False start, number 69, offense, five yard penalty, remains fourth down. And Blake Anderson shaking his head. 11 penalties, four turnovers. Blake Anderson referred to us a game in which they beat Central Arkansas when he was at Arkansas State, 50 to something one year. Played him again the next year, and his team didn't take the, take him seriously, and they lost to Central Arkansas. He said the same thing could happen today, and it certainly has. Motion man is Davis coming to the outside. It's fourth and 11 for Utah State. Laga waiting, waiting, waiting. Now he's going to throw, and he'll be tackled from behind. Five yards shy of a first down, and that's it, folks. Weaver State will come out. They celebrate on the far sideline, and they've earned every right to celebrate. They've taken over Maverick Stadium tonight. Their first win against the Aggies since 1978. Bronson Barron will come out. He'll take a knee, and he'll wrap this thing up. 1978. That's a long time ago. 44 yeah. years ago since Weaver State has beaten Utah State. And this was not just... A fluke beating. Nope. This was domination in every way, shape, and form. It started at the very beginning of this game. Bronson Barron takes a knee, and Utah State and the Wildcats, these guys know each other. They probably played on high school teams together. Some of them are relatives. Some of them played against each other in high school. But the Aggies and Wildcats come to midfield to shake hands, give some hugs as the Aggies got it handed to them today. Final score in this one, 35 to seven. The Wildcats come up north and have a Cache Valley takeover. Final score in this one, 35 to seven. Weaver State, Jay Hill and his crew get it done in Logan. We'll kick off your post game show next as the Aggies have a bye week to try to regroup after two back-to-back -back losses in which their offense score zero points. Only a 100-yard kickoff return, the only points for the Aggies in this one. Final again, 35-7. Weaver State gets the win over Utah State on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield. Dear sports fans.